My name is Mikey and you're watching to all the crowded rooms. We have a lot of diverse content on our channel from interviews to live sets to drinking challenges to a little game show I like to call Who Wants to Be a Scene Kid? Which is basically an exact ripoff of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire except with Warp Tour scene questions. So if you're into that kind of stuff, hit subscribe and hit that notification bell because you get the alert as soon as we post a new episode. Today is a great one because I got the pioneers of Crunkcore, Michael Shea and Fat J. What's going on, fellas? What's up, Mike? Here we go. What's again. up? How'd you like that intro? It was pretty, pretty smooth, it was, right? It was perfect. I feel like you wrote it just for us, but I'll take it. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so basically, the first thing I want to tell you guys is growing up like around that time, I'm 29 years old. I remember specifically finding you guys from finding on YouTube uh, your guys' cover of Low. Um, oh, yeah. That was good and times. that was like, I would always turn that on at either parties or if we're going for a drive with the boys. And it turned into a thing where like anytime like pop radio was on, I was turning, I would just scream <laughs> all the parts like, yeah, right? like, like it that. It just sounds more natural. It just feels good, especially yeah. during the scene era. Just got to scream at everything. Yep. And yeah, that was a lot of fun for me. And when I was doing the research on you guys, uh, I ended up finding uh, the sexy bitch cover. With... <laughs> yeah, that's a little hidden gem. Yeah, no, that was fucking sick. And I was just like, I can't believe all these years I didn't like know this existed. Yeah, we have a lot of music out there that a lot of people bypass. It's pretty wild. No, I agree. Because like a lot of people know you guys for just like the crunk core music and stuff but like i personally like after going through your whole discography and stuff like that like it's it's more than just that you guys have like a lot of diverse content or, or music too like uh you guys like yeah. dabble into like even like uh like even towards like your newer stuff like a lot of modern stuff even like your first record it's more of like a rap rock album opposed to like the yep. crunk core yeah that was a we, we wanted to be different when we first started. We didn't, in where we come from, it's like mostly metal and we're just all Hispanic boys. Like, so we're like, hmm, we're into this rap thing, but we just wanted to create a bunch of new genres in one genre. Hell yeah. Cause like, it's a mixture between like electronic music, crunk, screamo, uh, like uh, club music. We've done acoustic, yeah. we've done from A to Z in music, I think mine is country and classical, but we'll go there next. Who were like the the big influences? Cause like, like who would you take like the screamo influence from? Who'd you take the the, the club influence from? Like of the rap? Like, um, I guess uh, Lil John, mostly uh, Lincoln Park. Mm -hmm. What what else, Jay? Um. Hawthorne Heights, there the go, used stuff yep. like that. Like the like, we all really liked the, um, I guess what's called emo scene now. But I'd say that's where that that influence kind of came from. Some of it anyway. Right. Where did you guys feel most at home? Like as far as scenes go. Um, where, I think everything. Personally, I'd say everything. We just love music, each and every one of us okay yeah do you do you mean like the content itself or like us personally because like i feel like you could fit into multiple different scenes like i could see you guys like on like a like a bill that's like has more like screamo acts but then i could also see you guys like play like i've seen a video of you guys like playing like a private party and like or kind of like a night club kind of vibe yeah. like which what kind of show would you rather play like a vfw hall kind of thing or would you rather play <laughs> like inside like you know what i mean yeah those are the good ones those are usually the memorable ones are the vfw kind of smaller intimate shows personally i say but like the larger shows and clubs are pretty cool because all the lights and the aesthetics and that's what i think 
Yeah, and you know, touring with with like like minds, like the millionaires, and you know, Breathe Carolina, those those types of things. Like those those tours were really cohesive, so it was it was a little more easy to to win fans or have fans, but um, it was always cool to have the challenge. I think when when you think Mike, like having the challenge of of trying to get new new fans yeah, and trying new things. We never wanted to be stationary. We were just a moving machine, and that was part of the process. We wanted to touch base on every kind of genre we could because you don't really see that from many artists that can really do that without them branching to, like, maybe one other kind of genre. But with Broken Side, like Jay said, you could go anywhere. Yeah, no, I even saw, like, on your old, like, MySpace archives, like, your header said, like, don't you hate how all ba bands sound the same? Yeah. We I were just, just uh, 20 year old motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. What was like the first? Uh, I'm just curious. What was the first Broken sh Side show like? Like, you guys, was it like, <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, Misty's, Misty's Hideaway, Mike. Yeah. That, uh, that was like a sold out, like 50,000 person show. So it, it was just so <laughs> wild. It was so wild. We just can't no. go there. He, he's kidding our our first shows were just local like we were just local like everybody else you know what i mean we were, we used to play this bar by my house called misty's hideaway and it was just it was just like a, a little thing and and we would laugh because there'd be two two people in front of each of us you know like because mm -hmm. we had it like separated left right and middle and so all like the fans we did have would be like split up on the sides and it, it was just so funny yeah. yeah good times though what was like the reactions because like you guys are coming out of the gate like making a whole new genre of music like i i don't even want to say it's like ahead of its time but like it's it's something that like people i don't know if people were ready for it you know what i mean definitely not i don't think they're ready at all but it was it was wild, I guess. It was cool to see just people supporting something different and believing in a new idea and not, you know, typical music, you know, either it's rock or rap or right. whatever. So it was cool to see open-minded people, I guess. Because that's what Broken Side is, is open-mindedness and being unique in yourself, really. Cool. Would, you, would, like, people at your shows, did you find that they, like, moshed more or, like, they, like, busted it down? <laughs> Dude, you'd have girls grinding and then dudes fighting in a mosh pit. It was, <laughs> it was great. From song to song, it, it would vary for sure. Yeah, totally. Okay. That's dope. All right, so how did it all start? Like, how did how the boys come together? The boys. Um, back in like 2003, me and Sev, we were going through like kind of like our girlfriends broke up with us, so we were hurt. Let's start a band. And we started doing like the first emo rap, kind of like the Broken album. Yeah. And that's when Jay started coming in. We started, we're like, hmm, it's funner to like make party, well, perform party music and just out there because we were enjoying, we were young. And that's when Jay came along. And that's when we started, you know, doing Freaks, Get Crunk, all the good stuff. Hell yeah. Um... Right, Jay? I think. Our memories are yeah a lot alike, but <laughs> yeah, it, it was. I think I I joined in like 2007, like early 2007, and uh, I don't think we even really started doing shows right away, because um, no. I I was just coming in to um to just play keyboard at the time, and um, Sev needed help with um with like screaming because it's hard to go from screaming to rapping to screaming you know so like my my role at first was to ease in each part you know what i mean and i didn't even know how to scream and it's funny too because like if you know me i'm the chillest dude ever and and i mean mike too all of us really and it, it's just I don't know if ironic is the right word, but like we're making super hype music, but we're all like really chill dudes. Right. So are you the type of dudes that like, as far as the lyrics go, like, are you popping bottles in the club? Like, is that really like your guys's persona or are you guys just kind of like, uh, doing it, it for the part music? of it? It was yeah. part of it for sure. Like we, 
we were always real. I could say that for sure. Like we were authentic in, in our lyrics. And um, I think that's important to us because uh, I come from more like a underground hip hop lyrical background, you know? So I think you, you do it simple, but you got to put thought into how it comes across too. Okay. Um, so as far as like the lyrical content goes, cause I know like, uh, there may be a misconception that the lyrical content isn't like, like you wouldn't describe it as like lyrical, but, uh, I've seen yeah. you fat Jay. Talk. It's more witty. Mm -hmm. We we were young and being very witty. You know, if we like, you know, some, I, not smart minds, but you know, witty minds because they're usually funnier. They see an out different outlook on life. And you know, when we're saying pee pee, you make my pee pee hard and this and that, you know, it's like just for a quick little giggle and make you have fun with music, you know, because I don't want to cry the whole time I'm listening to a song or something. I just want to laugh sometimes too, you know. That music needs to exist. Yeah, Some man. It's just. Go ahead. Jake. If I could add, Mike. Um... I just I think also that when you're when you're making music right and you're because uh, Sev was really lyrical in the beginning too and like yeah those songs did well but once you see the success go a certain way for a certain type of song that you're creating are you going to choose to be successful and go somewhere or are you going to choose to just keep it real and underground like like the Dave Chappelle skit you know what i mean like you you have to choose are you gonna which way you're gonna go you know what i mean and so i i'd say like the fans and also you know we want to succeed so that that sort of leads you a little bit too yeah so as far as in 2007 uh the broken was putting out and that was way different than uh your guys's album uh but the kids will love it um yeah, I'm, not a fan. Fan. I'm not a fan but the kids will love that that's what it's called right the kids like it yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan but the kids like it <laughs> uh which was a which was a real quote by the way somebody somebody literally told me that one time in um providence rhode island because we played this like this really underground type like pee, pee smelling yeah pee smelling uh metal bar and like uh everybody was really stoked and we left and we we're we were happy and i i asked the promoter i was like so what'd you think man he's like yeah well, you know i'm not a fan but the kids like it <laughs> and we were like oh shit and we'd all died laughing and and so we would tell each other that all the time like as an inside joke that reminds me of uh, Back to the Future when Marty McFly starts playing Johnny B. Good at the, the school prom. <laughs> yeah. You ever see that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, uh, the Broken album that came out. Uh, so can we talk a little bit about that era and what went into the creative process of writing that album? Yeah, for sure. Um, cause it was more rap rock than crunk core at this time. So what yeah. was going on with like writing these songs? Um, Sav was always in like a super lyrical hip hop mode. Like that's where he started like fat J. Um, but we also were really like rocker kids as, as well. We're little, we're not necessarily rebels, but we were just, you know, ourselves and mm -hmm. that just was different. So that on top of like being broken hearted for the first time you're just like oh let's start a band brother and that's where we wanted to put music out about you know love and being heard and sad but still put a new twist on it so we wanted to add screaming well sev had a you know it's just i guess a group effort but you know sev is a really smart guy and he heard something different so we started adding the screaming on top of like the rap singing aspect and it was just more emotional rap rock music i guess yeah and as far as like your influences michael uh it kind of sounds like uh you're like a chill rock singer like on that early yeah. stuff like kind of like totally. you were... i was like super into like creed and alternative and you know mm -hmm. limp biscuit and uh lincoln park and all them kind of artists you know i was like 
I had the I looked like a little gangster kid back in the day, but I was a little rocker kid underneath. So cool. that's how it started. Awesome. And uh, what about, I couldn't find this anywhere on the internet, but Broken Angels. Uh, yeah, that was what, just like during the MySpace days, the whole sign thing, you know, you're, I'm sure you remember, like if you're part of the MySpace days, you'll remember how people would do signs, you know, to help promote and bulletins the, and this and that. Yeah, you know, you oh, Mike, you know, I'd write Mike, hey, what's up, bud? And then, oh, okay. you know, it's just promotion. It was like promotion for each other before social media kind of was even doing it. So this was you like know? your street team kind of? Yeah, and then just fans just started sending tons and tons and tons. So we're like, whoa, let's let's make this a group of people. And, you know, since we're a broken side, well, let's have some broken angels. And, you know, whoever would make us signs, we would post it and they would, you know, feel really good and we would – be super happy to know that we have support out there and it was really cool it was just just like social media nowadays just you know like for like and you know share for share and all that good stuff right so how were the fans at this time when the broken came out like was this before like people started like hating and sending you guys like yeah. death threats and <laughs> shit like that oh yeah this so was like people were very open to it and just whoa this is really cool there wasn't much hate towards it at all like there was nothing but support to be quite honest okay and what I think was that's the why it caught on gotcha so what was the scene mixtape that followed up the broken because i couldn't find that anywhere either yeah that was a cool one that jay and sev threw down pretty dope ass uh i guess yeah, an LP, it's, right it's it's uh it's a full length um that i just recorded at my house or me and Sev, rather, and, and Mike, we all recorded it at my house studio. And uh, you could find it on SoundCloud. Oh, really? That oh, that yeah. was the only place I didn't check. Yeah, it's all it's all up on there. It's like a, a pig in a blender. Oh, sick. Uh, so what, what was that like? Like, is that the transition into the crunk core? Or are we still like in the rap rock era? Oh, no, that was that was way later. That was like after our second album, I think. Yeah. The scene mixtape was, yeah, yeah, and and uh, the broken wasn't technically an album. Like uh, we used to just put songs out one at a time, you know, mm -hmm. like every week or whatever. And then and then Mike, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like I think everybody else like put it together and made it an album, right? Yeah, we were just doing singles, and then uh, yeah, people just put it together. Oh wow! That's the broken, and we we're like okay. And we put it, I, guess, I think me and Sev, I don't know what happened exactly, but we were doing the singles like Jay said, and then, yeah, we're going to go with Jay and keep that simple. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the fans were the ones that were like, hey, all these collective singles, this is actually, uh, th th this era of music is actually an album. And yeah. the, the cover art is one of those Broken Angel pictures that you were talking oh. about. So, oh, that's sick. So the yeah. fans made the art. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so dope. And you guys just rolled with it. Yeah, we yeah. were just we were down to put out music. That's all we cared about. That's all we've ever cared about is just putting out music for people to enjoy, you know, and just break the monotony of what was out there and forever will be out there. Cool. So uh was there any like physical was there ever like a physical release of that album in particular? No, that was digital. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it was just a it was just a MySpace collection of of singles. I gotcha. You know, like like a mixtape, a, a more modern to put a modern spin on on what didn't really exist at the time. Did you ever like make like homemade like CDs to pass out of that at shows? No, I think it was more of like when MySpace and the whole social media world was starting to bloom and do its thing. It was just a lot easier to people were just sharing it digitally on their own. So that's where that really helped out and was a beautiful thing. OK, gotcha. So uh, let's get into when you guys actually started switching up the sound from the the broken into the crunk core. Um, yeah what what made you guys want to go the route of like hey i want to make shit that sounds like lil john but fucking like have some crazy screams over this shit brie brie right yeah brie brie definitely changed things it was so, a big fucky song really 
Was it? Well, just to like oh, the yeah. whole metal world because they everybody in the metal and screaming shit were just talking so much shit. We're like, all right, well, watch us pop this fucking banger out. And it's just, you know, the Bree Bree shit, you know, all the fucking grindcore. So we're like, all right, well, watch this. <laughs> but that was that was locally though like online we we were accepted and everything was good but like locally um here in albuquerque the metal scene is is what's really big you know like hip-hop is okay but it, it's like underground hip-hop there's no scene for for what we were doing at first in my opinion oh, we so created it we created that lane for sure damn okay. that's crazy so when you're in the studio creating your first crunk core song brie brie and you're just sitting back listening to it for the first time did you guys know that you captured magic in a bottle uh no i guess every song is just like it's a it's just a song and then when people just attach to it they're like that's obviously when we know but just recording our earlier music well it's always been fun recording all of our music we just have fun really mm -hmm. Um, but that yeah, whole... if it was if it was good enough, we put it out, and then you know it's it's like any other art when you put it out, it's it belongs to the world, and then they decide. Yeah, it's crazy though because the BC thirteen uh, mixtape, or I think it's like a five song EP. Yeah, it's an EP. It's it's all crunk core, so you must have really fucked with Bree Bree and said like, hey, let's like make this a collection of songs like going this sound right now. Yeah, yeah. I, it was really successful because we had already built that that like structure, you mm -hmm. know, from from the broken and, and the MySpace era. Like so the anticipation built up. And by the time we put out our first EP, it was like we're all ready to go. You know what I mean? Because those songs had already been on MySpace. Right, Mike? Yeah, like the Bree Bree and all them schizo. I think Schizo was a good transition into like the Brie Brie world. I think that was like the big X factor. So the Schizo yeah. helped put you guys on the map for the crunk core sound. Yeah, definitely. That's where, you know, it went from broken to like, I think that was the cross into Brie Brie, honestly. Cool. So when were you guys approached by Suburban Noise Records? Man, back what year jay i don't know things were just going so fast uh i think it was like 2009 something like that right, around 2009. Er, early early 2009 because we were talking to a lot of labels at the time but um you know it's it's hard when you're so different and you know to finding a place to live is uh is is hard you know and those guys are cool and everything and you know I didn't mind being on that label, but I, I think we should have probably done it ourselves and just created our own lane, you know, but, but on, on the other side of the blade, you know, um, we got some cool opportunities from, from signing with them as well. So it, it you, you give and you take. Okay. Um, so, I'm trying to figure out the timeline of this because was the BC 13, was that on Suburban Noise? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So that but I the, have, sorry. The songs had already existed for, for a, a little bit of time though. Like they were already out. We were already touring those okay. songs and like they were already being like, they had been known, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Okay. Um, and also, I wanted to ask about BC13, what that actually stands for, because I'm ripping my hair out trying to understand what the 13 stands for. Um, it's luck. just luck inside family, really. It's like luck. It's family. It's, you know, it's it's kind of like a Latino thing. A oh, Latinx. <laughs> a Latinx <laughs> type thing. <laughs> I think there's a deeper meaning to it. It really uh, isn't. That really true. isn't. It's okay. Broken side family, just broken side. It's just like we're a camp. We're just a big family, literally. And, you know, we've got the good with the bad. So we'll take the 13 and here we go. BC 13. What about the whole uh, gang sign you guys got? The, uh, the crown. Yeah, oh, just... that's a crown? 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like peaks of a crown. Oh, real king shit. Yeah. King shit. Uh, okay, so you guys... Uh, I watched a bunch of your guys's like behind the scenes touring videos and stuff like that. Uh, Good stuff. You're no strangers. Can I, can I just say something real quick about the uh, the crown? Yeah. Like, um, so a, a lot of people think that you know we followed suit or whatever, like 303 and all those dudes, but we actually did that shit way before those guys. Oh, okay. So like that was that was our way of of communicating and like having a, a um like a symbol that our fans could could um like represent you know what i mean but like yes. we we definitely didn't follow anybody anybody else on that like yeah, that we sure. we were renovators on a lot of stuff like the like having the pig the crunk pig yeah like, mascot we brought a lot of innovation to the industry and i don't think people know that realize or give us credit but deep down we know and we're good so so from watching like old videos of you guys behind the scenes, like partying and shit like that behind like music video scenes and shit like that. You guys are no strangers to marijuana. I was wondering if you what? have. <laughs> no. I don't know no? what you're talking about. <laughs> no. Yeah. Hell yeah. We I'm not a cop. <laughs> you're trying to incriminate Something me, a sir? cop would say. <laughs> I was wondering if uh, you guys had any good stories smoking with any rock stars. Because I did an interview with uh, Matt Mahana from uh, Ism Fof, and mm -hmm. uh, I've seen you guys shout out Ism Fof uh, and say that they're the homies. So I was wondering if you had any good stories. Yeah, every day for Warp Tour, he would come and smoke out. I didn't smoke then. So it was Jay and Sav and Ants back then. I didn't drink or smoke, really. I wasn't straight to... I just I just didn't do it. I just okay. wanted to perform and yeah do that stuff. But all of our cool stoner stories are are like just us, you know, just existing. Like um for instance, I my favorite story is uh one time we were in um <laughs> I think it was Modesto, right, Mike? The that arcade. Oh yeah, Modesto Virtual. Yeah, so we were at this this uh, venue in Modesto, California, and um, we had got hooked up with like a pound of weed from from a fan, and so we we were like trying to go through it because we were scared of holding that amount and you know touring and you know what I mean because we didn't want to like go to jail or anything, so we were trying to go through it and we were we were rolling what we were calling baby arms because they were like ridiculous <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> joints like ridiculous and and so we we rolled one of those up and, and we had maybe like six or seven people in the van and we're in a 15 passenger van they're they're not they're big but they're not huge you know and so we're all in there smoking smoking and um i forget what happened but we looked out and there's a cop on a bicycle and he's like he starts knocking on on the window and we're like oh shit we're like be quiet and we would hang up a towel on the front and and you just see the flashlight like and we're like trying to keep still you know like as still as possible and he keeps knocking doo, 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 and he goes to the front and we're like we're all freaking out you know we're like just don't answer don't answer and we did know and so and so like he's he's talking to somebody out on the side and and uh we're like, oh man, what's gonna happen, you know? And so he ends up leaving and we we're like, oh, thank God. And so we all get out of the van and and it was like some Cheech and Chong shit. Cause we, we were dumb and we parked right under the street lamp. And so the <laughs> van was here and it was just like, woo, like, like a, I can't even explain the amount smoke. of smoke, smoke coming out just of it. And, leaping out of any air. And the light was just like bringing it to life even more. So like that cop was probably just going by like on his bike. Like, what the hell? <laughs> what are these guys doing? <laughs> he oh was my the best, God. man. So funny. But we got out of we got out of so much, so much uh trouble through the, throughout the years. Yeah. Like we we never really got in, in that much trouble and I mean, we were doing some shit for sure. So she was that ganja. We love our weed. That's we're super hippies, a lot of us. I guess all of us in the group, we're all hippies that just love weed, really. Hell yeah. 
And we're back. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit on, like, one of the key components to uh, crunk core is crunk music. And uh, I yeah. feel like your guys' uh, love for hip-hop, you guys would know a lot about, like, the history and background to crunk music. Uh, do we want to dive into that a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so, yeah, crunk like crunk music had a lot of influence by, by uh miami bass music buck music new orleans, new orleans bounce texas chop and screw and it's crazy because like it dated back to the 80s which then Lil john just like took and ran with it and just like completely like made it mainstream and totally. I, and it's crazy you and uh it was like an atlanta sound and you guys in New Mexico are just Ooh. like, Ooh. you all right? Oh, too much Get carbonation. Oh, sick. Uh, <laughs> That's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> Were you guys listening to like a bunch of Lil Jon? Is that like the main artist that like got you guys into like those kind of beats? Uh, also, you know, like some of it, you know, there's Paul Wall and then there's all the Southern, Southern music, yeah, like the Texas fucking chopped and screwed. We were always into that. As far as crunk goes, I'm pretty sure the the um, first people to mention crunk was actually Outcast and um, and Goody Mob. Okay, um, I don't know if you ever heard of them, but uh, but they're like the originators of that word, and and I think. Um, you know, all the, the ATL artists sort of took that sound and, and enhanced and enhanced, refined, refined. And um, I, I always just was like really interested in the soundscape, like the heavy 808s, the like, yeah. it was like a, a, a derivative of like the West Coast whistle if that makes any sense like you know the old 90s like west coast whistle noise yeah yeah but like but it, it was like in a distorted way and you know um that sound is what really intrigued me personally and i'd say probably the other guys too but um yeah we just really really liked that sound and um incorporated it that way just cool. organically you know what i mean yeah no and you're right about that outcast first coining the term crunk because they did it in uh i think it was their song hootie who yeah um and also like the first song to like get on billboard as a crunk song was uh tear the club up by three six mafia and i was wondering if you guys oh, yeah. fucked with them hell oh, yeah. yeah big time we love that kind of music for sure for sure uh, did you guys happen to catch uh, when I think it was a couple of years ago, Lil John did a uh, a collab with Juicy J called uh, Crunk Ain't Dead? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. It's pretty wild. Yo, that shit's fucking lit. Hell yeah, I, dude! I, it'll I, never die. When <laughs> you can for, like forget about it for tomorrow, but when you hear crunk music, you're gonna be starting mosh pits by yourself. No, it's insane though because like, uh, oh, I can't remember what the song's called. It's like the it's like the number one crunk song by Lil Jon. It's like to the windows, to the wall. You yeah. that is the most timeless like club song of like ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they definitely um, paved paved away for sure. For yeah. sure, for sure. And then it's crazy because like there's even like little pockets of crunk that like there's like a subgenre of crunk music, uh, Crunkin B, which is like Chris Brown's Run It. You know what I mean? <laughs> where we're like, and then there's an even deeper fucking where you guys pioneered it. So we got Crunk and B, which is a sub of a sub of a sub. And then we got <laughs> you guys doing Crunk Core, which is the metalcore version of Crunk music, which is fucking insane. It's yeah. just like that sound amped. Just amped. Yeah. You know, drink a Crunk juice and then that's what Broken Side is. Yo, let's yeah, talk about that. <laughs> Did you guys ever meet Lil John? Because I know that you guys were sponsored by uh, Crunk Juice, right? He, yeah, he we watched were. us once. 
He watched Dang. us once on the Warp Tour. Yeah. And that was like uh, a dream come true. But none of us saw him. Um, they just told us. And it was in Atlanta, I think. Yeah. Yo, that's fucking sick. So he was side stage while you guys were pl doing your shit? Yeah, because yeah. we uh, there was one of the security guards. He was the homie. Like, he loved us. And so I guess... He um, had done security for Lil John or something, right, Mike? I, I don't remember, yeah. but but he he's the one who told um, Lil John about us, and he brought him over to watch us. Damn, it's crazy. I like you go back and watch like a bunch of like the old Warp Tour videos and just see the people that are side sage, and you're just like, yo, that person fucks with that person. That's fucking yeah, sick. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like a lot of people that talk shit were also like watching too and jamming. So I think it's just cool to hate Broken Side, sadly. Yeah. Though, I mean, I hate people that are like that. Like all the energy you put into hating someone, you could easily take that and support someone you fuck with. And they do support. They just don't want no one to know about it. That's the wild part. That's so dumb. But yeah. uh, so how would you guys define crunk core? specifically like what what are the elements that make up crunk core like if i wanted to start up my own crunk core side project which low-key i want to uh <laughs> how would yeah. i do it from the music to the fashion aesthetic man fashion has changed that's like crazy music wise where i guess we just wanted to make some rap music that's super hardcore that's like not really like I don't know, like something you can wash to, but also have like a 40 in your hand while having a girl grinding on you well, smoking a joint well. Just the wildest rap slash like hardcoreness in my brain. That's when I hear Crunkcore. That, that was it's in a, my heart. It's all about fun too, like just yeah. having fun, having a good time and expressing yourself the way you want to be because like me personally i was never i was never like the scene look like i i had a skater style you know mm -hmm. what i mean and uh and a lot of people gravitated towards that too you know what i mean like yep. we all we all were just unapologetically ourselves and just had as much fun as as we could and so if you wanted to to be a, a crunk core artist i think it's about you know um being yourself obviously yeah For and sure. you you, you got to have some some crunk ass beats. Yeah, that that's maybe a must. Yeah, you need the beats, uh, <laughs> the, the the sense that dun, 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 kind of shit. Yep, yep, exactly. Um, exactly. You need the screams, and then Mike, you got to have the sexy parts where you're like Dude, you're you talking to the, the ladies. Yeah, the sexy Mike voice. <laughs> Yeah, you for gotta sure. have that Latin swag, the hola, ladies, que pasa? And then it just goes from there. All right, so, and also, I want to say that, like, around, like, the time that the crunk core was popping off, there wasn't too many artists that were strictly crunk core. There was, like, crunk core by association, but there yeah. wasn't. So I'd say, like, uh, Spanky from Dot Dot Curve, he was yeah. a true crunk core. Hell uh, yeah, respect to that, dude. Yeah. Sure. Shout out popping a, or dropping a, a popped locket he was doing uh crunk yeah, shout out shout out yep. spizzy for sure yep much love to all the people that really did support crunk core uh who else was doing it because i couldn't find too many artists that were like making legit crunk core there was iterations for sure like um i think you you named the main ones but there was like J Rec, but he mm. was part of Dot Dot Curve at one point, and um, I don't know. There was derivatives. Um, there's a mm. couple others, but I, I won't name them. Mm. We got some beef. <laughs> no, not it's just beef. Staying not away beef. from bad energy. Okay. Who? So who was like Croncore by association? Millionaires. Um, yeah. Mm. Like who, sure. who should people check out if they're fucking with Broken Side? Dang, that's a good question. I set my friends on fire for sure because they're homies. Um, I've always been real. Well, Matt is super dope, dude, as you know. Uh, millionaires, you know, because we we just came up in the game together, and 
I don't know. We don't like labels. That's why we kind of did the whole Crunkcore thing because we don't like to be labeled on anything. Mm-hmm. But I guess we kind of did that to ourselves by making a genre-ish. But I don't know. Us, Broken Side is Crunkcore. Yeah, dot, dot, like- I, I don't know, man. That's a hard question for me because I think about it and I'm like, I don't know. But there's people that put 303, Hollywood Undead, you know, Jeffree Star, you know, and they'd no, be people, they'd but... be mad they'd be mad if you label them that but yeah you know it's that's what people label them not us yeah. well do you know i got into a big debate with my one buddy because i was like hollywood and dead's totally crunk core except for the <laughs> the little john beats like the like you can't tell me that number five is is not a crunk core song definitely a sceny beanie song for sure back in the myspace days yeah it wasn't necessarily like i guess I don't know, like fully crunk core, but I totally agree on that one. That's totally my space sounding. Yeah, because like For if sure. we're if we're chilling at the club and I'm having a drink and I'm at a Broken Side show and I want to see either Broken Side open or them open for them, I want to see fucking uh, Hollywood Dead going, start getting loud, I want party now. So, so, yep. so it's a party foul. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, also with the millionaires, like uh, – it, I think it was like a couple of years ago. I remember sitting down with my ex girlfriend and turning on a show, a little show called Bad Girls Club. What? And, and uh, Melissa pops up on. I was like, I saw that girl sing this song about getting paid and getting laid at Warp Tour in 2009. And what the fuck is she doing on this show? Which the only reason I knew this show is because I used to watch YouTube videos of the the craziest fights that went down uh, on those shows. O- on those shows, I was like, I hope this girl doesn't get her ass beat. And no, of course, dude, there was- they threw it down. I was surprised. I I didn't know about Bad Girls Club either. And then I heard they were gonna be on it. I was like, homies. So I checked it, and they were throwing some fucking hands, dude. I was like, those are our girls making us proud. Yep. They had some chingasos for sure. <laughs> uh, because you guys are homies with Melissa, uh, I have to ask, uh, is she really rocking the big bow all the time or is she just doing that for uh, for the, for pictures and videos? Uh, she does it. Uh, she did it for sure. I even do it sometimes. I'm going to show you right now because I'm that dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, she does it. And, you know, she's always – Millionaires are just like Broken Side is Broken Side. We have our fashion, you know what I mean? Uh, style, that's her style. Okay. I hopefully, I hope she's cooking dinner in it. That'd be pretty rad. I'm going to have to FaceTime her and see that. Be like, hey. Yeah, it's. I think it's pretty authentic. It's, yeah. it's part of her her thing for sure. And like, like Sev, she's a, a pioneer in, in her look. And like all the kids after her, you know? Right. All right. So when I watched the Brian stars interview with you guys and you guys were just like, you guys were on warp tour and you guys were like, this band doesn't fuck with us. This band doesn't fuck with us. Like, and I was curious, like who, like, were these bands also saying that they didn't fuck with you guys because it was the cool thing to hate on broken side. Probably dude. I, I, I know, like, I don't know, I'm, I don't drop names, but some of the bands, like I said, like, they talk shit, but then they're side stage or trying to, you know, talk to you. So it's, like, really weird, but. And also because we we weren't a band, like, we, we were a group, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, I, not to compare myself at all, but, like, more in the Wu-Tang type, type you know what I mean? Yeah. Not to yeah. say we're like them musically at all. I'm just saying we were more of a group than a band. And um, people called us a band. And so people that were in a band would get pissed mm-hmm. because we weren't, you know, playing guitar and drums and you know what I mean? So we, we weren't. Kids, so Yeah, you know, but we, we definitely had ours for sure. No, I think it's I how you're saying that you guys are a group. I, uh, just watching live videos of you guys you guys tastefully know where you guys are supposed to be in your own lanes when you're performing because like i notice when sev is fucking screaming his fucking verse or whatever mike is just fucking rocking the fuck out and then you were talking about earlier fat jay where you're just like i kind of just like 
even the stuff out so they're different people could take different breaths and stuff like that. And then you carry the harmony or stuff like that. And then like, then Mike knows when to step in to talk to the fucking ladies during the middle of the song or the chorus or whatever. And then, you know, but it's really cool because it's not like you guys are a boy band, but like it's the same boy band gone bad. No, not at all. The bad boys. (laughs) (laughs) No, but dude, not to embarrass you, Michael, but um, he is the fucking best at at um, telling the crowd what to do and like being the front man. No one was better than than Michael Shea, straight up. Dude, I love you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> uh, so as far as uh, when did this the hate start c- coming in for you guys? I think when success happens, just like okay. with any business, it's mm-hmm. just, and because we were so different and because it was also a trend to buy our album, buy our merch, go to our show, but still say you hate us to all your fucking friends. You know what I mean? So Also, there there was a campaign at one point that our, our label oh, yeah. had, had put together that we were the most hated um, band of all time. And so they started like, putting a lot of energy into that campaign which ultimately like we did gain probably from it but also i think it hurt us in the long run i saw you talking about that in another interview and you said that like you didn't fox with that but like i in all due respect i feel like it would have been a smart move for you guys to lean into that to kind of be like fuck you guys like we like, probably should have, but like we always say, we're real dudes. Like we're not about trying to fucking clout start chase drama because we've had so many big bands like come at us from A-list bands trying to shit us down, but we just want to do the high road and just smoke our weed and be like, all right, well, fuck you then, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it's 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 always been fuck you, but like we don't say it because we're all about positivity and our shows were all about getting away from the bullshit. And I think that's why so many people loved us so much. And like Michael was always pushing that while, while in between songs, like be yourself, be happy. You know, Um, we love you guys, just positivity to the fullest. And we never wanted to, to create that persona of, of hate at all. You know, we, we were always cool always nice we we always signed um fan stuff we always you know made the time to talk to other bands and show them or at least i personally did i tried to show them like we're we're regular chill dudes like you know what i mean yeah and uh that's crazy you say that because i just recently watched an interview on no jumper uh with uh franz from attila and he was saying like people talk shit because their lyrics like are like party lyrics or whatever but he's just like that's the kind of music i want to make because like so many people come up to me and say uh I don't want to listen to the emo lyrics and stuff because that makes me more sad. I want to forget about my problems and just let loose and have a good time. And that's why I fucks with Attila. Yeah. yeah. I Shout feel out like, to them for sure. Yeah. I feel like that's the same vibe with you guys for sure. Yeah. hundred percent. It's just, it's easy to be negative. It's like quicksand, you know, quicksand, you get stuck very easy the more you resist. So it's kind of like hate and darkness, but we just want to show light and just show you can get out of anything and, do anything because we're where we came from is like a fucking fairy tale story dude the whole Mm -hmm. broken side yeah we're we're like so so rare from where we're from like there there was nobody to ask you know you know are we doing this wrong are we you know what i mean like our our only friends in that way were in los angeles or you know what i mean in in different places so it, that that was definitely a harder, weirder part about it. Uh, so with the hate coming in, stuff like that, you guys were receiving death threats. And it amazes me to think that, like, you could put out a fucking party song and people are telling you, like, they're going to fucking kill you on the spot or some shit like that. And I was wondering what, yeah, some of, what some of these death threats you were receiving, what people were saying. Man, it's... It's pretty like immature and childish, but you know, it's just, 
when someone even puts a death threat, if someone says fuck you to me, we're definitely going to have a, a talk and it's probably not going well. But when you throw a death threat around and then to our families and then put other titles on top of that, like it makes people want to hurt you. You know what I mean? But, you know, we know it's just computer warriors, you know, because we have dealt with people in person. They get their fucking heads, you know, a little black eye or five and they understand we're about our shit, but we're also really fucking cool dudes. Gotcha. We never invited that ever, ever, ever. So what, what were people saying to you around this time? Man, anything, like, anything yeah. you could think of. Damn. Just fuck you. Hope your family dies. You know what I mean? Like crazy shit, dude, all over music. And it's just wild. It's sad. But, you know, they did it for clout, as people call it nowadays. But it's just to be cool back in our days. That could be soul crushing. Like, I'm surprised, like yeah you we're guys persevered yeah we don't give up and we're from new mexico and that's just one thing about hispanics for sure is you do not give up over some shit like that and we just wanted to conquer as we do and show that that wasn't the truth and mm -hmm. you know we pioneered something and we're still shining to this day broken side will never die love the it. real ones no the real ones no absolutely um, and they still rock they still rock with us but we don't care about hate, honestly. We just smoke a blunt and we're forgotten. Is that all just like internet stuff? Like at the end of the day, like because like there's like cancel culture and shit now and stuff like that. Like, how would Broken Side have done like back 2007 to 2009 if like if you guys came out today? It only happens to people that aren't authentic. I think mm -hmm. if you if you portray yourself as like a perfect whatever, whatever, and then you know what I mean, then you aren't that way, then yeah, like you'll probably get that. But if you're authentic and true to yourself, then people know what to expect from you. So I think it would be the same today as it was back then. Just right. my opinion. Okay, so uh, I have down in my notes that your guys' first tour was the Make It Rain tour with Karate High School. Uh, is this correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So how can you tell me a little uh, about some memories that you had on your first tour? Man, Karate High School showed us the ropes because they were headlining and just the success of Broken Side flipped it. So we were totally new to the game. But they were amazing dudes, showed us how to, you know, do things right and party, actually. They're yeah, they, they showed us they showed us two buck chuck, you know, mm -hmm. from Trader Joe's, like the, the cheap wine, because they would buy cases of that shit before tour. And like, that's how they would get by, you know what I mean? Alcohol wise. And we were like, oh, shit, that's pretty smart, you know, and just like just the different tour hacks. But my, my favorite from that tour was, um, you remember, Mike, when we played in, in that basketball court? Oh, God. We, yeah. <laughs> we played in the middle of this basketball court. There was no stage, no nothing. I don't I don't even know. It was like these jank ass little speakers on the side. And like, I don't know, but it was still fun. It was still a lot of fun. We How learned a lot. So now it's starting to make sense with the whole 40 ounce thing. What, did you guys start uh, fucking with 40 ounces because it was the cheap alternative on tour? Sometimes. Uh, I, I, I just know 40s from growing up. Like all my uncles and shit were having 40s and just getting wasted. So at that time, I guess there was sparks, but also 40s. Okay. We were, we were heavily into um, Grey Goose at the time. Mm -hmm. most yeah. most of the whole um you know career. touring career we were all we were always drinking like vodka um i don't know not to name any brands or anything but gray goose was our favorite for sure okay but 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 there was some 40s for sure okay and how old were you guys around this time this is 2008 by the way yeah i was like uh I was like maybe 23, 4. Okay. I'm not good with math. Yeah, I was I was 19. Wow. Yeah. Um so uh 
I have also 2000. You guys grinded the fuck out in 2008 from releasing music to playing tons of tours. Uh, the Get Fucked Up tour at the Millionaires, Hyper Crush, and The Arrival. Uh, were these all the homies? And do you guys have any good memories on this tour? Yeah, definitely. Millionaires have always been homies. That's how we came up. Like, you know, if you're in the scene, you know, Hyper Crush is really cool too. And uh, The Arrival Dibs Dope some crazy memories hmm. our, oh, i shit. think our our one of our first out of state um shows other because we went to denver our first one but our second one was in california and we played with the millionaires at a, a venue called the exit it was in fresno i think yeah but, so we we literally been fucking with the millionaires since the very beginning very and beginning how did you meet them like did you guys meet them on myspace beforehand or did like uh a, your, your booking agent say hey this would be a good combination like to put these bands on the same bill no uh, we were I remember sev was doing a lot of the booking at the beginning before anything and that's where and the myspace so we were always kind of chit-chatting with millionaires and like hey we need to work one day and we just set up that two that tour slash show and when it happened it was it was magic it showed that what we were doing was real magic and different okay yeah for sure uh, um and then i have uh for 2008 you guys playing uh your first warp tour and was this the only warp tour you guys played yeah we only played 2009 yeah yeah 2008 oh. we didn't do the warp tour oh, okay only then I oh, skipped no, ahead. Um, so I'm skipping ahead then. So uh, we have a tour with Let's Get It, Vogue in the Movements, and Schoolboy Humor. Do you guys have any memories from that one? Yeah, they're all pretty similar where we just get drunk and have great times with people and just, you know, enjoy our fans. Um, wasn't Taylor I, Foyles, wasn't he oh, part yeah. of Let's Get It? So yep. our, our photographer for most of our, um, you know, early career was this guy named Taylor Foyles. And I think he was the guitarist and let's get it. So we definitely chilled with him probably more than anybody else. But all the other guys were really cool, too. Cool. And like as far as like um, cuz I'm going to be naming a bunch of tours that you guys went on cuz you guys went on like like five tours <laughs> uh this year but do, do you guys have like any like horror stories like getting to from a venue or maybe like staying at someone's place or some shit like that because i have here also that you guys went on tour with breathe carolina every avenue the morning of um that was a fun tour was it it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah it's crazy the the lane breathe carolina paved uh their way out yeah. of the warp tour scene they did it. They're smart dudes and they're also talented. So I'm happy for those guys. But they were, dude, those guys are really good dudes and their music speaks for itself and their numbers speaks for, you know, for what they're doing. So I'm glad that they, you know, etched a way out of what kind of we were all doing. So what was it like touring with uh, a young Breathe Carolina? Oh man, they were just as rebunctious and wild as us, if not crazier. <laughs> Yeah, those guys definitely knew how to have a great time. And like as headliners, they were very cool. Cuz yeah, a, a lot of really well. A lot of people that we toured with were not very cool. I mean, I, I actually it's the other way around. A lot were cool, but there were some that definitely weren't. But those guys were on on, you know, some of the better ones for sure. Okay, cool. Um, and then also in 2008, you guys got on TRL, which I heard you, uh, Michael, you talking about it on, uh, the punk rock NBA podcast, yeah. but Good uh, dude. can we get into that story, uh, for the viewers listening? Yeah. Is it, uh, where the, the van broke down? Yeah. So first I want to know, like, how the hell did broken side get on TRL? Dude, them numbers and our support and just us being who we are and obviously our sound really says a lot minus the people talking shit so that's our fans have been our number one supporter like so it was really beautiful to see you know we were touring our van broke down as we were on tour in florida 
I don't know what part went out, but it was so hot. I don't even think we had an air conditioner, did we, Jay? I don't know. No, we we didn't. We were all in our underwear, like ninety percent of that tour. It was bad. Yeah. So, so you're literally hot boxing. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Well, at that time, I was the only one. I was the only one who smoked at that time. That's why in some of the promo videos, I say I'm the stoner of the band because <laughs> at at that point, I was the stoner of the band, and and like I would I would uh, crack open my window, and you just hear, <laughs> and then they'd be like, "Oh my God, Jay, really? Fuck!" And I'd be like, "Just real quick, bro. I'm sorry." <laughs> That's yeah, it funny. was a torturous one. So it was really humid, really hot. And uh, we were naked, and our van just gave out on us in, somewhere in Florida. I don't even know what happened, but, you know, we, our manager hit us up and said, hey, great news, freaking great news. I was like, I didn't want to hear about, like, if anything happened. I didn't care. But he said, oh, you're going to be on TRL. I was like, mm, well, our van broke down, so I don't really know if we're going to make that, dude. And he said, well, you got to make it. You got to figure out how to make it and blah, blah, blah. And we're young dudes trying to make it. But out of nowhere, some angel kind of dude just showed up out of nowhere, towed our, he helped us get our van to wherever we were going, got us a motel and got the part early in the morning and fixed our vehicle so we could get on our way. Because we for needed free. to get, yeah, for, for free, free to New York to hit, uh, you know, MTV and even getting there, it was a wild story. You know, we uh, <laughs> we took a shower in some pretty crazy places for that one. It, it was a cool experience. New York and TRL was a really good blessing. Wow. It's not what you think, though. Like, the not room the room is tiny. Like, it's just, it's so awkward and weird. And, like, it, I don't know, just, just the vibe. And even when you see it from outside, you're like, this is where, like, I've seen my, my whole dream? life. That's that's yeah. crazy, you know? It's just way smaller. Way no, smaller. It's movie totally. magic. Like, I don't know what people think, like, where I am right now, but, like, I am literally, like, in a Philly basement. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've even seen uh, Jerry Springer in studio, and that studio is, like, super small, so I can only imagine. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Armolino from uh, This or the Apocalypse. I heard him talking about uh, doing Silent Library on MTV and saying uh, like yeah. how shitty they were treated. Like they were like waiting around for hours to start shooting and they had like no food for him besides <laughs> uh, Jolly Ranchers. And they're like, yo. Entertainment business. MTV's yeah. just like, they, they're not going to pay the people that are on because they're like, you're getting exposure and yeah they probably yeah, couldn't crazy. they probably couldn't they were on their way out i think that's yeah. why they they had us on there is because it was something new and they were trying to revamp the brand mm. you know what i mean that that's all that's the only sense i could make of it how come i can't find a video of you guys anywhere? TRL went out of business so mm -hmm. they took down all the footage do you guys have it though no, nah, they were they were supposed to send it to us. They were supposed to mail it to us. I remember because I, yeah. I asked. But I don't know. They might have been sarcastic. Like, yeah, we'll send it to you, bro. Because <laughs> I was like, I was like, please send it to me. Like, I want to have this forever. But oh, I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna try to get a hold of this footage, <laughs> bro. That'd be so epic. Do you guys have like any emails with like the people that worked at MTV? Because I think we could get a hold of this. Nah, I, I remember meeting Damon. I think that was his name, and that fucker was tall as shit. Holy crap! Yeah, he he was like six five. Like, dude was huge. Well, is huge. Uh, pause. How... <laughs> <laughs> what about your guys's uh, Fearless Records live in studio session? I don't know if you guys know Jared Alange, but he did a reaction video to you guys to it, and that's that how I discovered like, it. Really awkward and set us and made us look like shit because, like, they gave us no. There was we like even... no. There was like no sound check. There was no like anything. They just said, "All right, here you go." And we're like, "Holy shit, what is this?" And when you hear the audio, obviously, when you hear it, you're like, "Hmm." Even I say, "Hmm," but you know, yeah. It's, uh... 
So it was a we full definitely, send. You guys got yeah, one take at each song. Yeah, we didn't, e- dude. We didn't even know like anything about the channel. We didn't even know what we were going up to do. We we were just told it was going to be like an internet show or something like that. And when we first started, um, like Mike said, we didn't get a sound check, and and like the first song i think wasn't working and so we're we were like freaking out trying to get it to to work because with my keyboard i had to have a di box and all sorts of you know technical bs but i remember it wasn't working at first and we were all like kind of you know on edge because we were trying to get it together and and then um we did our best obviously but but it, it wasn't like the best circumstances i guess well, I didn't I mean when I watched that, that's what initially made me want to dive deeper into you guys cuz I'm like, what the fuck? Like these guys like they're fucking crazy. Like I think this is fucking sick. And you know, you go through the comments and stuff like that, people are just like people just don't I feel like Broken Sides just very misunderstood sometimes. Absolutely. The year is 2009. Can you guys tell me about the writing and recording process of I'm not a fan, but the kids like it? Dude, that was like literally in our hotel room every single night. Sav and Jay were killing it. Just we would go to the label to record. And then that as soon as we'd get there, we would start writing the next songs to record for the next day. So you were writing we, this we on the did road. the whole thing in two weeks. I, I'm pretty sure, right, Mike? I think yeah, it, we had it was a, two weeks. Yeah, really short deadline. They're like, "Hey, we need an album." All right. Damn, and you brought uh, a couple of the songs off the EP over to uh, the yeah, full length. We redid them though, like we re-recorded them, like in so just to make it, you know, different. But but you guys wrote these songs on the road. No, in our hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, in the hotel. Oh, so you guys were at a studio, but you were staying at a hotel writing. Yeah, we were in LA. We were recording at our labels. Uh, In the office, they had a recording studio. So we went to Burbank, and we were just staying in a hotel. And we would just go record, like I said, during the day and work at night. Okay. And uh, who was making the beats on this record? A lot of them are um, Tristan. Tristan, yeah. Tristan, I think his last name's Cruz. So is he like an unofficial member of Broken Side? A hundred percent. He's he's part of the BC thirteen crew for sure. sure. But I like I co-produced a lot of it as well. So you were there like making the beats with him, basically. Well, uh, my keyboard parts. Okay, cool. So so the the percussion, all that, all Tristan. But like the some of the lead synths and all that was was my doings. Sick. Third shot to you boys. Cheers, mate. Cheers. I'm having coffee. I'm having shots of vodka. <laughs> coffee I got, and weed. I got way too fucked up last night. I uh I'm very hungover. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. That's uh, the best. So, um, yeah, so uh, what was the name of the studio you guys were recording at? Uh, it was just at the label. It was their studio at Suburban Noise, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so they have their own studio. So I, I'm guessing all their bands would come through to record there and they just do everything in-house? I'm pretty sure most of them. Um, shout out to Mike Kumagai. He was the engineer. And he he actually did some of the percu- or, um, production on some of the albums as well. He was really 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 cool dude, like um, like this Japanese dude. But he was he was like such a chill guy. So he was producing the music with you guys. Like you guys were taking these songs, sending it through the gauntlet, where he would kind of enhance like the songwriting. He was recording no. it. He was yeah, engineering. He was- yeah, he was the engineer. He did he did do a, a couple of beats though um, on the second or or, or third album because okay. he we did we did all of our albums uh, except for the uh, the first EP with him. Okay. Um. So this was all self-produced basically, besides uh, the dude that makes the beats, Tristan. 
No, we, we used a couple of different guys. Um, Tristan was the main one, though, for sure. Okay. For sure. Um, we had another dude. Um, his name was T. Mike. And then there was another guy. Because we, cause we would, um, like, for the the more electronic music, we, we had certain producers that we worked with. And for the, like, Tristan, he's, like, Bay Area to the death. Like, he's the dopest. Like, all the hyphy shit you ever heard from us, like, Yellow Bus, um, anything hyphy, that's always Tristan. Wait, what's hyphy? Like, E-40, like, uh, okay. Bay Area hip-hop. Gotcha. Like, the boom, the boom, the boom, boom. And, like, the just weird, weird percussion and, like, heavy-ass 808s. Like, he he definitely was on that wave. He's one of the dopest producers, in my opinion. Sick. I agree. How'd you guys get linked up with E40? Because that was pretty dope that he was on the record. Uh, that was a label thing for sure. But like I said, we were we were doing a lot of high fee music, so mm. it made so sense. it made it made perfect sense. Dope. Even though the song we did with him wasn't that high fee, <laughs> not at all. That was like super mainstream, but it was for uh... that was booty call. Yeah. Yeah. He's a cool E40 is a dope dude. Like he yeah. he did promo. He did all kinds of stuff that I most legend, rappers don't so. do. He's yeah. a legend. Did you guys get to chill with him or was he just like he recorded his we part and sent it over to, to you? But uh, because of didn't uh, work schedule out. clashing, we had to he was supposed to be there for the booty call video, but he couldn't make it. But the next day we had to leave on tour, I think. So he yeah. did part. Uh that's a bummer. So it was, it was a, a day apart but you know how it goes yeah it is what it is uh what was the reception of this record because what did what were your fans saying about it compared to what like uh bloggers were saying about this shit i mean it hit billboard charts top 200 like i think 85 so i mean to come from new mexico and to hit billboard charts past the 200 mark like that's wild and our fans have always supported any experimental vibe we have done. But, you know, a hater's a hater, and those people will pay the bills, so fuck them. Yeah. And it, it was definitely still true to the Broken Side brand because, like, the shake it like some chocolate milk, nobody ever said that before, and that, that shit's genius. And, like, shout out to Sev. Like, dude, I'm he's telling a genius you, he's, for... he is a genius. And... A, I'd say probably 70% of our success is because of him. Wow. Yeah, no, it's crazy cuz like when I'm teaching myself the lore of broken side stuff like that, I'm even looking into what Sev is doing like on the side and he's got his own like side project thing going on like tons of songs and uh you know, he he's kind of doing the more mainstream hip hop thing. I feel like, which is pretty dope. Yeah, talented he's dude. he is so talented, and like he deserves a lot, a lot of respect, in my opinion. And I've been doing music my entire life, and I, you know what I mean. I I know what it takes to do music and to do it well, and to renovate and to market properly and you know what i mean like a lot of people think it's just so easy but it's not like he he had a vision and and like he inspires me still yeah same he's a special uh energy for sure and do you know what I, I was even checking out uh your side project uh fat j where you're taking it back to like the old school like hip-hop vibes yeah that's that's where i come from like um broken side was um experimental for me mm -hmm. at first you know what i mean but um it's just as much as a part of my life and a part of my um artistic expression um but i come from underground hip-hop roots right. like i i used to have books of just hip-hop 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 like beyond a fan you know what i mean I'm a hip hop head for it. Well, a music. Like I just, I love music so much. What were your thoughts on, uh, did you get a listen of uh, Spanky's uh, new record type butthole? 
because he he did the same thing with going back to the old like hip hop sound. Really, I, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I, I definitely plan to. Um, he's the homie for sure. Yeah, he definitely like uh, you know. He was doing the crunk core stuff, but now he's like trying something new. You know, I mean, you guys do the same yeah. shit. I mean, you guys yeah, switch e- it up. Dude, even like uh, Michael and I had a song called My Girl. You know what I mean? I don't know if you're familiar with that song, but it's like it's way different than than anything that people like have come to. Much. Yeah, it was like it was classic hip hop R&B. And like, you know, we we always showed our colors it's just do people give us the time of day to listen to more than just one track that you know their cousin said sucked or you know what i mean like are they going to give us that that extra listen to like find because there was so there was reggae there's r&b like broken side we did a lot we did a lot of different stuff because we are all those things you know like we're blazing, we're jamming reggae. Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You guys did that collab with uh, who's it? Daddy X of Cottonmouth yeah. Kings. Yeah, that song's yeah. fucking dope. And I mean, who better to do that song with? I'm just saying. <laughs> True. Touche. Um, let's see. All right, so you guys put out the the video for uh freaks and that video uh what are your guys thoughts on that video after all these years dude i mean if you want to be a dickhead oh blah, 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 i'm a fucking keyboard warrior but in reality music should be fun like if a nobody knows this well a lot of people don't know this but this was a college project for some kids you know mm-hmm. what i mean and this happened right after our van situation where we just got right back on the road. And this was another, hey guys, by the way, you're gonna be filming your video. And we're like, oh shit. So we were sweating like fuck. We show up to some video after our van just broke down. Zero dollar budget. Yeah, to TRL, like, dude, we didn't even care. Like it, art is art, you know what I mean? Like you can't call like every art piece you know beautiful or shit you know what i mean like but not not to mention dude we were just starting like you you don't go back and look at van gogh's very first art piece and be like that's bullshit fuck that you know what i mean because what do they become you know like we're judged very heavily like i said i was 19 years old you know how am i supposed to know every single little thing and you know what Maybe I mean? Like, music videos. We're from the ghettos of fucking Albuquerque, New Mexico, dude. Like, we're like number two poorest state in the nation. Like, so for us to create something so magical and have an amazing fan base to where we're able to travel on zero dollars and make it work to have this music video being made is a blessing to us. Yeah, but for sure. It was just something new that we learned. And that's also when the internet was not internet but like the social media youtube world was kind of going around so it was like really fast paced very fast paced and a lot of keyboard warriors and you know it it makes you feel good talk bad about others when you have your own issues and that's a lot of people so we just got a lot of that backlash but do you feel We're like it's, do you feel like it's kind of a blessing and a curse of its virability whether people took yeah. it seriously or not yeah, definitely. It's a double-edged sword, like a lot of our situations, but, you know, we win and lose on both ends. But at the end of the day, I think we pioneered something very special and paved the way for a lot of things that people don't really realize. No, I agree. And my bad, Jay, I don't know if you wanted to add anything about, like, our first video. Like, Oh, no, you... I was going to I was gonna say the same thing. Like, they were they were kids. We were kids. Like... It was our very first video as as like the broken side that was known because there was one one video before that I think right Mike yeah no, that no, that one no. wasn't that one wasn't really out there like that and like people were holding us to a certain standard when we were just learning you know it's right. hard like when you're just learning keyboard are you supposed to be Beethoven <laughs> or I mean piano. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, it's no. like it's it's an unreal expectation. And like so like Michael said, it was a blessing and for for where we come from, that's like a major, major, major win. Yeah, I do you know what I kind of see like a similar thing that also happened to like you know like uh attack attack stick stickly how that video went viral but like for not the right reasons kind of thing and it was like you were saying michael like a double-edged sword kind of thing because it's cool because like it gets people talking about the band but also like people are just talking shit for the sake of talking shit at the end of the day it's it's one joke leads into a fucking mountain you know what i mean the hill becomes a a fucking mountain and it sucks because it's not a real mountain it's just Mm -hmm one person saying something stupid that another person thought was funny and then it's like it backfires for us people that are trying to make art for legitimate reasons yeah it's bullying yeah we we've tried and worked we worked so fucking hard like michael especially straight up we we worked like of course we had fun and everything that's to like stay sane but we worked really fucking hard man uh so question because in the music video we see your boy brie the pig <laughs> yeah uh but who- he's still traveling the world with some models i forgot which current model but wait who was in the pig suit um, a model <laughs> yeah a male model oh, wait really <laughs> No. Uh, yes. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, because okay. I noticed uh, Bree had his own MySpace page, and I was just like, would you guys just troll people on the Bree account? No, nah, we just, Bree became a character. We were like, I think unknowingly, we were building this whole like see shit social media kind of like world where we also brought in like, uh, you know, it's it's just like um, it's business. Unknowingly, we were young and we were learning business. But like for Bree Bree, that's where he came in because of the song, because of people talking shit. So we were like, dang, we should get a mascot. We initially it was gonna be a gorilla, but it turned out to be a pig. So that was really cool. And he became like a uh, a party monster for Broken Side, like our mascot. Yeah, an icon. Yeah, because yeah, the pig squeals and shit like that, like the re re. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't, I can only do inhales. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard to do. They're really Hell hard yeah. to do. That's Dude. what I'm saying. People talk shit, but do that. Yeah, can you can you uh, do an exhale brie? Fuck, I know I can't. I'll tell you that right now. I know Fat Jay I- can. <laughs> I I used to man. I actually like all the years of, of touring. I I blew out my vocal cords pretty bad, and so like it's it sucks because I'm um like in my my side projects. I'm I'm doing more singing and stuff like that, and it's it's kind of hard because I definitely it took a toll on my voice. Damn. Because I was doing the. Roar! you know what i mean i i was the one who always did the lowers and so like that shit thrashes damn yeah no i i know that like uh a lot of artists use like the zen of screaming melissa cross to like avoid like hurting the vocal cords so you could go a longer career doing that that was again just self poor kids from albuquerque yeah (laughs) we weren't getting no vocal coach yeah the full send all right, so <laughs> also in 2009, you guys went on tour with Drop Dead Gorgeous, I Set to Kill, and then there were none. Any good memories on this tour, considering I, I feel like you guys are kind of the oddballs on this tour? Yeah, uh, we had some good ones. Um, I remember the lead singer from Drop Dead jumped off the balcony and broke his ankle and still killed the fucking show, and it was great. And then we still all partied. He's a trooper. Hell Yeah. yeah. They treated us really cool. They weren't like most other bands. Like they were just fucking really cool dudes. But we were, we were all about um, Colorado too. Like we loved Denver, so we got we got along with those dudes really well. Everybody from Denver, we we generally got along with. So so I and and I I used to love playing football. You remember we used to play a lot of football, like just yeah. throwing. And then um, I forget what. 
we used to play an, another game too. Or ants had like a potato cannon or some shit. <laughs> Okay. I don't remember. He used to buy all sorts of crazy toys. I think he had like a potato <laughs> cannon or some shit. Yeah, we so built we were, one. We were causing mischief with that shit. And like, <laughs> that was fun. Hell yeah, every yeah. tour you got to cause trouble. You got to make the time go by. Yeah. We did a lot of skating too. We were doing a lot of skating. Oh, uh, were you guys skaters? Um, Ants mostly, but I... Yeah. I tried a little bit. I sucked though. Like, <laughs> I would not consider myself a skater, but I like to ride a board. Hell yeah. Um, so, also on, you guys played Warp Tour in 2009. We're going to get into this now. Um, was it awkward knowing that there were some bands talking shit on you guys and that, like, every day you'd go in and you're just like, oh, these motherfuckers are going to have to see you all summer? Or can were, I, or were they nice to my face? Uh, like beyond like the bands, like, cause, you know, like if it's any job, you can't just go fight with, you know, your personnel. So, you know, people talk shit, but they were sidelines or they just talk shit. That was that. But it was more so like having to deal with the general public that like really showed a different side of humanity and people because there's one thing to hate. You shouldn't even hate, but like people took it to another level. They were throwing some wild things and they put us on the punk stage of all things but like what jay like i don't know like how shitty was that right i so me personally i spent a lot of time going out and meeting the people that hated us i made it a mission of mine not to be an asshole not to cause controversy but like i said to show them that we're just like them. There's no difference. We're just making music and like trying to be successful. And we're chill ass dudes. Like I was chilling with with everybody from um, Cove, from Seosin to the 303 dudes to um, uh, what was his name? The Scary Kids, Scaring Kids um, singer. Yep, yep. I'm stoned, but don't. Yeah, me. <laughs> but yeah. But I was old. hanging out with I was yeah. hanging out with him, Mod Son, um, yeah. T Mills. Like we we're hanging out with all those those people, and like try. I was trying to change the narrative. You know what I mean? To show people that we're not bad. Like we're chill dudes. We could be friends. Well, and a lot of them, you know, came to smoke, and they were really cool, and they would come support. You know. And it was really nice to have other bands see the beauty of what we were trying to do. So shout out to them. What ended up happening uh, with the band Punchline during that Warp Tour? Dude, I don't know. That was that after. Guy. Yeah, that, that, was, was, after? that was after. Yeah, so well, that wasn't during that's... Warp Tour? No. no. Oh, I. Yeah, I it was just a random time. off show. Oh, okay. And there but, was a, there was an altercation. Yeah, we'll just skip to that. Yeah, there's just dude. I feel <laughs> Philly is another fucking place, especially I guess during NFL playoffs or that I don't was know, Philly, what? Pittsburgh. Yeah. It was or Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Oh, okay, sorry, Pennsylvania. Sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Philly because we're a trash <laughs> hole. Yeah, no, it was yeah, it was um, Pittsburgh. But yeah, Pittsburgh. It, I don't know what the hell happened, but you know it's broken side, and people just talk shit and alcohol plus ignorance mm. equals like people playing victim pretty much you know what i mean like people talk bad until you get fucking punched in the mouth then you no nope. nobody likes to point. lose yeah <laughs> so this was a typical case where people were hating for look trying to look cool get clout for hating on broken side and you guys are just like yo fuck you guys St step up bro pretty much and you know, from there, that happened, and you know, dude took it for what he could, and you know, whatever it helped them out, and they started selling out shows. So you're welcome. Oh damn! Yeah. So you think that helped them gain a little clout, a little clout from? Yeah, and yeah, and dude, it. it was wild oh, for us. We were trending on Twitter for like a week after that. It was who won crazy. The fight? But, you know, a shout out, no hard feelings. It was just dumb shit. But, you know, at the same time where we come from, like, if you talk shit, we're going to fucking sock you. Mm -hmm. 
and like that was that but you know if you call victim your victim i guess but right when you know broken side and meet broken side we're such chippy dudes that are chill you'd be like what they passed that <laughs> limit yeah but that's what it's because they it's because they don't know us they don't give they don't give us the chance they think they know everything about us like even here locally because my my wife is a drummer shout out to my wife jenny um she's she's a drummer in her sibling band and like she was jamming out with this other dude and he would like he would talk shit about me and broken side and this and that and this and that and then when he got to know me because he was like hanging out watching movies and you know what i mean like we were all hanging out he realized i was a cool dude and then he wanted to make music after that you know what i mean once once he realized oh maybe i didn't know anything about these people it just then seems like the music a shot and then they're like damn this is really fucking cool especially now where music is you know now like broken side was this 10 fucking years ago right yeah no definitely like a precursor of like what a lot of kids are doing today like on soundcloud yeah. and shit like and that still beyond that like we it's not only just sound but we created a whole lifestyle in a way how so yeah i think graphic you know, tees mm-hmm. graphic tees mm-hmm. we we put that on the map for you sure. think like, the the monster tees yeah, like the, the, the graphic, like cartoonish, you know what I mean? Like that, the pig I, I just showed you, like that style. So you think you know what wait, I mean? so colorful, kind of gangster, like, I don't know. So the it's cartoon monster merch. I feel that way or not, and it's my opinion, but I just think we've paved a lot of ways that I still, I think it's trending with, I, and I think fashion as well, like Jay saying, and I think sound. And just like, um, there was one other one, but I forgot. Sorry, Jay, to cut you off. No, you're good, bro. I, you know, not only that, but like the, the, uh, the aesthetic, the sound aesthetic, I, I hear it a lot nowadays. I mean, it's done in other people's own ways. I won't say they jacked us because nobody sounds like we did. They just don't, but. Like there's certain parts of it that definitely I can see. For the viewers listening, uh, who do you guys think specifically uh, might be taking influences from Broken Side based off of just historically what you guys put out to like what you hear coming out today? Intentionally or maybe not even intentionally, but you could be like, yeah, we used to do that. Like I hear the influence right there. I mean, uh, I don't know. First, I can't put words in people's mouths, but I mean, like, I've met a lot of, like, you know, the SoundCloud rap, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know, like, Ghost Man, we met that dude, and, mm-hmm. you know, he gave shouts out, like, damn, I fucking listen to you guys, respect, you know what I mean? He was a cool dude. Little Aaron mm-hmm. is another dude that has shown a lot of respect and a lot of love, so that's really cool. Um, but there's a lot. You know what I mean? I don't know. The SoundCloud era. The sound SoundCloud era, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, that, I guess that's what I mean, where we paved the way for a lot of things, you know, because we've dealt with a lot of fucking bullshit for the sound of just, like, like club slash heavy screaming music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Before that, there was not that kind of, like, 808 fucking screaming southern crunk as we you know the whole crunk core sound you know where it, it came from so i think you know i don't know you know just the modern day every rap screaming thing you know yes. they're suicide kind of boys you know we've been they a lot of people bring 100 gacks close to us not close at all we're totally different but but there's I, there's elements yeah of just like experimentation of where we're not afraid to be ourselves sure. and i think that's really cool I guess where I say all the time where we pave the road for a lot of people because they don't have to deal with all the shit we had to deal with. 
Right. Yeah. yeah no. It, there's a. I. I feel like uh, the world is a lot more accepting now of certain things. Like there's a lot less bullying and shit like that. So like yeah, when you hear totally. like a hyper pop song, which is literally just electronic music on AD, like with ADD, uh, no one like really like makes fun of it as much as like I'm sure if that shit dropped back in the day, people would say like, "What the hell is this shit?" It'd be way before its time. So I definitely feel you on that, Mike. I was going to be sarcastic and be like, Kanye West, Biggie. <laughs> I was like, definitely no, take an no, influence. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so I got to ask you guys, uh, because uh, I saw that there was a website back in the day called Mothers Against Broken Side. And uh, I, I tried that website. He started it. Who was that? my cat no i'm just kidding we don't even know where that came from we have no idea i found the lady who who made it and no way yeah. i've always wondered yeah because I, I was able to get on like uh, a blog for it and it said her name and i looked her up and she looked like oh, a total God. karen and uh i that's I, hilarious uh, send me that facebook link <laughs> just so, kidding. Do you guys not remember what's on the website? Because I wasn't able to see what specifically was on the website. Dude, we were so busy just trying to like tour and meet everybody we could and get our sound out there as opposed to like all the drama shit. But it was pretty wild. I don't mm. even know what the hell it said. I, I just know it was like mothers yeah. against broken sides. So if we breathe, they were against it. That's all I know. That's what's weird because, like, I don't know why you guys were picked on for that because it's like, why this, no, no offense, not little band, but, like, you know, you got mainstream artists that are doing similar things, like, lyrically that you guys were doing, but you guys are, like, the super bad influences, you know what I mean? Like, we There's have just always that one star that shines brighter than most, but we're all stars, you know? Yeah. But you pissed some lady it off. It sucks having to deal with that bullshit. Yeah. What do you think but, you did to really piss off this lady? Man, maybe she didn't have her coffee that day. I'm not too <laughs> sure. Maybe she didn't go for her morning walk or... That and also, you know, like, if there was that many moms and all that that hated Eminem, I feel like our music, peepees, and you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I, I would be weird if my daughter was listening to that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's but, true. But you can't control who listens to your music. We were just making music and we get shunned for making music. You know, like we don't pick our audience. Like any musician knows that, like, especially us, we were just making music to make music. Like yeah, it's usually artists are trying to sound like somebody or, you know, like we just went out there. We were just like forties in hand and here we go. Yeah. It's like, am I supposed to do some PG 13 shit just to please you lady? Like, yeah, like it, and it said parental advisory. On the yeah. CD. We did our thing. Like what more can you do? <laughs> if your daughter got a hold of it, like that's, that's I on mean, you. Like, that's on your, that's your parenting. Like no especially nowadays, the content nowadays is like 10 times worse. So like, holy shit. Yeah. But it's so, so funny, just the name Mothers Against Broken Side. I just think that's the funniest thing in the world. Yeah, it, it was a it was a good one. We were confused. <laughs> uh, also, uh, around Is this time, your name was Karen. No, no, I'm saying she was a Karen. Oh, I got you. I was gonna be like, that's fucking ironic. No, she probably Don't smoke the, weed, the, people. Probably I'm the just... lady that's gonna speak to the manager. You know, like yeah, no, I send the food I, back. I don't even, but bless her soul yeah if, if i could um do a plug real quick my wife has a song her band about um karen's like, oh, just she? telling <laughs> just telling them to shut the fuck up you know what i mean what's and your, like what's your what's your wife's uh band's name uh they're called constant harmony okay um i i just filmed the video because i do um videos and uh, I just did their video for that, and like they all dressed up as Karens. It's so funny because she's uh, in a sibling. She's in a sibling band. Her brother yeah. and her sister. And th they're, that they're hasn't dope. dropped yet. It hasn't dropped yet. Yeah, uh, but um, I'll I'll actually I'll I'll send you a link. You'll like nice. it for sure. Yeah, I want to see that shit. It's like some punk shit. All right, so Jenny. 
Yes. How how is touring in Europe? Dude, it's so beautiful. Sorry, not to jump in front of you, Jay, but like the one thing Good. about Europe is that they're so open minded that our music was able to shine for what it was. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Europeans are really, really, really smart. And they're ahead of, of us in a lot of ways, man. Cause like they all speak English. Like everybody's um, bilingual, at least bilingual there. And, and like, I just thought that was so cool. And, and uh, they definitely have things figured out. Like Germany, you'll agree, Mike, like it was so, so clean and everybody was so nice. And we were like, this is not what I thought Germany was going to be. You know? Yeah, there was like media uh, America. They were just for the music and the vibe and they really appreciated that vibe. And I know to this day, we're super thankful for that. Okay. Because they were a really big driving force in like the sound of what we were trying to do. Yeah, the electronic, on the electronic front, for sure. And we've always been underground. So I guess that's where it really benefited for us is that underground in the UK is like a big scene okay. because they're really ahead of their time. Because when, like, what, man, just the music they were showing us then is like now huge. Mm -hmm. But like, they were like, way in advance and it was pretty cool okay yeah for sure i'll agree with that they're they're amazing i love europe uh so any memories in particular in europe like was there any culture shocks that were different that like you're like oh that's crazy like i didn't realize that yeah just cult just seen every to be cultured i guess just to shorten it up is really fucking beautiful because we're from the desert and just to see all these different people that believe in the sound that we're trying to produce is really cool. But yet, you know, we all come from different backstories mm -hmm. and that was like really cool. And just seeing like the different kind of people, cause we're a little bit different, but like, I will say on a different note, I got bit in the fucking cheek by a guy when we were performing Bree Bree and that was very awkward in well, Europe. He just if came up and just... It was, on I stage. don't know, I don't know if werewolves exist, but that Werewolf motherfucker. Werewolf in London? Yeah, it was, I don't know if it was London, but in the UK, that motherfucker tried to take a chunk out of my fucking cheek and shout out, but that was weird. <laughs> Dude, so many, so many cool memories. I, I, um, I just remember most like being hungry every day because, because I've always had a wife and kids so like um i was always broke and i remember uh when we would first get to the venue like racing to get sandwich meat and like those those will always be my uh, best memories and and like having fake fights in front of the venue i used <laughs> to love doing that yeah we like to kick the shit out of each other uh it's we wrestle i guess we're wwe in our band well, so people that are just walking by, they think like you guys are being serious, like fuck you, like no, no, no. We we were laughing and like having a good time, like we just all kind of have a brothers on the road living a dream. Yeah, and like sarcastic, you know what I mean. And and that we had games like uh, there was this one called Pop Lock and Drop It. So you would you would uh, snap your fingers right next to someone's dick, and if they flinch. Then they had to pop lock and drop it and it was very <laughs> demeaning and we would do it in in the funniest places you know oh i, I mean love that i'm gonna steal amongst that. other amongst other very uh they get bad very, games. Uh, mature rated I mean, pantsing was a thing for a while didn't That's like not that game one. to play i hated that um, game was it lighting each other on was it yeah. underwear yeah. or like or uh, peepees out it was total, total. Because when when you're comfortable, you're you're wearing like basketball shorts or or like gray sweatpants, and you know what I mean. At a flying just, J gas station. Yeah, uh, one time I was I was hanging out and I was talking to these people and and like I thought I was all cool, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, da, da, da. and then Sev comes behind me and just. <laughs> I was and like my reaction time was so slow. I was like. Did that just happen? <laughs> and 
and there was like girls and it was it was bad man it was really bad but um we would play the um light each other on fire game like there was a lot of a lot of fun fun memories when it comes to that so we're gonna get into the shit because uh to all the crowded rooms is actually we got our name from the song to all the crowded rooms by census fail so Uh i have to ask because i'm a huge census fail fan but when it comes to the beef that went down between broken side and census fail with buddy nielsen uh i lean on your guys's side towards that uh disagreement but uh do you guys mind telling the story for the people that don't know what happened between you guys we don't even know dude like to be quite honest like we were into that music like all these people that talk shit on us taking back sundays like fucking we were like going to these people's shows like listening to these guys you know be like let's create this kind of genre of mix-up you know so it was really weird he was just like an angry dude on steroids no i don't know (laughs) it was one it was one-sided bro it was super one-sided like he didn't like us but then he was hanging out with us on 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 tour he was hanging out so yeah drinking our beer taking our girls like he doesn't say all he was all the good stuff yeah he was hanging out dude so and then uh, uh i'll leave that information out yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, my he's Gino. A, he's a man's man. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was just stupid, but shout out, whatever, because we did like census fail and we're the bigger men, but that was just whack. And it, it was, it's entertainment world, man. You know, like that shit sells. And if that's what's gonna push your band, you're gonna do that. But we were never about that. We're just but about I feel like time. that's the opposite of what he was going for in his message because he was saying, like, yeah, okay. that, that's what we thought. Because, like I said, we were like, hell yeah, we were on that board. And then to experience it as a fan into that curve of world, you're like, uh, what the fuck just happened? Right. It will, it, what's weird is because, like, similar to what we were talking about with Mothers Against Broken Side, there's so many other, like, mainstream artists that are doing what you guys were doing, but worse, like Eminem, Marilyn Manson, stuff like that, that were, like, you know, put, well, maybe not, it, uh, I don't even know what to say, like, who who I'm comparing to. Controversial boundaries yeah. of comfortability. Yeah, or just, like, trying to make fun dance music kind of stuff, like. Sorry, uh, that's a chinchilla. It, it's running right now. If you, got, if you hear a noise, you got a chinchilla? Is it taking a dust bath? Um, yeah, my girlfriend does right now. It's just running its uh, workout right now, so excuse it. Can we get that chinchilla <laughs> on camera? <laughs> it's kind of right there. Let me see. There it it's, is. That, that's it's chinchilla. <laughs> but yeah. But anyway, but, with as far as Buddy Nielsen goes, I would just love to see his brain explodes if he was to check out like artists like Lil Pump or like Six Nine. Dude. You know what I mean? It's wild yeah. because they're like the forerunners in the music scene right now. So he must be like shitting his diaper or something. <laughs> yeah, I think we influenced Six Nine for sure. Do you think so? For hundred percent. The colorful style. He's like more aggressive on rap beats, hundred percent. Yeah, dude. A lot of people just don't admit it, but a lot of fucking large artists, from you know Ghost Main Suicide Boys, you know, a lot of those artists are, you know, not Broken Side, but you know, a big dash of Broken Side, whether unknowingly they know it or not. Sure. Yeah, or, or at least admi- they were admit it or not. Yeah, or at least like they're influenced by the artists that were influenced. By pushing guys. boundaries dude just we just love to push boundaries and make unique kind of things um and no total rush brother just saying okay cool um all right let's talk about the crunk kids tour with blood on the dance floor the red the ready set kill paradise watch out there's ghosts uh we don't really have to talk much about blood on the dance floor but yeah uh, we're just gonna cancel that fuckhead i'll personally say that a lot of the guys don't care about drama i don't either but fuck that dude yeah was there any like red flags when you guys were on tour where you're just like yeah this guy's kind of strange he just did his own thing yeah but we didn't hang out with him we never hung out with him at all he had his world over there 
and we had our world over here. Like he doesn't smoke weed. He doesn't, you know what I mean? Like we, we weren't on the same vibe at all. So okay. we can't, I personally can't speak on anything negative or positive. Cause we just weren't around the dude. Right. But you guys did tour with blood on the dance floor twice. Correct. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, okay. Well, yeah. So basically you guys were on tour, but there wasn't any like co-mingling essentially. No, not at all. Not nope. at all. It's Would just, just vibes, you know, like people know vibes. Okay. Not um, our vibes. Was there anything? But shout out to Jay. Jay was cool. Okay. What about, uh, cr- it's called the Crunk Kids Tour. So like, this is like your guys' tour. Was there any good memories? Because it seems like everyone was busting it down to some crunk music. Uh, uh, yeah. Good vibes from everybody. It was were you cool. guys the headliners? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Except for maybe like one show. Okay. Because uh, who who was second on that one? I don't remember. Was it Blood? I don't know, but Wait, who I is... know. Yeah, uh, who was second? Buttons. <laughs> Here, let me see. Oh yeah, you have the tour passes. There you go. Oh yeah. Um, Looking good trying. there, Jim. Like you, bud. Trying to look here. Can you flash oh, hold the, on, guys. Can you flash the tour passes? Yeah, here. So these are all my tour passes I have. There's the Hollywood Undead, <laughs> Death Race, Get Fucked Up Tour, Breathe Carolina, Warped. And then this is Fight to Unite. And there's Crunk Kids. So it was, yeah, I guess blood. I don't know. Yeah, shout out to the Ready Set. They're always pretty cool dudes. Yeah. Yeah, you guys must have been a real shitty band to have your own fucking tour called the Crunk Kids Tour that, like, has, like, a bunch of, like, staple, like, scene bands on with you guys. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, it was a fun fun tour all of our tours were so much fun like we always had a great time um let's see uh so all right 2010 you guys put out your album broken side will never die and i had a question about the the name of the record broken side would never die is this basically the name coming from everyone that's trying to tear you down trying to slander your name to uh to uh you know just making fun of you guys shit like that is it just your way of saying like fuck you guys we're not going anywhere and we're going to continue making music broken side will never die i think so it kind of like put it in pop culture as well just to be yourself and if you want to listen to metal music and wear seen bright clothes and spike your hair but still fucking listen to that shit fuck yeah be yourself yeah but i think also- that's fair. People would scream that part really loud when we would yeah, play good, live. Bro. Like that, that part was like really stood out. You know what I mean? Because we would we cut the music right there. Broken side will never die. Like just epic. Oh, uh, so that was like kind of, not the mosh call, but like it was the tag. Yeah, and it's like it's giving props to our fans. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Um, we'll can- never die because of them. You know right haters so, too uh can you tell us about the writing and recording process of will never die did you go back to uh the same studio that you recorded your previous album on same engineer but we went to his house for that one okay. so he he lived um in san pedro california yeah. yeah and it was like really beautiful like we we would go out and smoke on this cliff side and like it was it was super beautiful and epic. As far as these songs go, was there anything that you set out to do differently songwriting wise on this album opposed to the previous record? Um Form- formulas. Me, yeah, definitely. I think we were trying to make the fans happy instead of just continuing what we were trying to do. And that's where it kind of it's cool to have fans, but then trying to please them all the time kind of leads you astray sometimes. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I would say that's definitely true. But the, the formula was the same. Like we were we were writing the night of and then recording the next day. And, and you know what I mean? Like when you first make music, you're super hyped on it. And it, it was definitely like a different vibe. But it was fun. Like uh, we, we got our engineer way, way, way too high. <laughs> and like he made us leave and like we, what? we left and, we left and then got pulled over. Man, that was scary. But shout out to LA cops for not caring about cannabis. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Well, no, that time I, they actually gave me a ticket. And oh, then that I was had, a long time. Yeah, and then yeah. I had I had to fly back out there like after tour and take care of my ticket. It sucked. Oh damn! So what was that? It's not a DUI, but it's like. No, I just was in possession. Like I wasn't driving. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, because they were sketched out. Because we we're in a van with a trailer. You know what I mean? Or do we? I don't. We. I don't know if we had a trailer or not. But. Nonetheless, just a yellow van with tinted windows going through super rich, known people's areas is not normal. Yeah. Yeah. So they pulled us over right away. But uh, that was the only time I ever got in trouble for it. Uh, was there uh, on the on this record though? Uh, did anyone assist in producing this one in particular? Um, Kuma guy was on that was definitely on that one. Um, he did a couple of beats and then Tristan as well. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say that was a majority of the pro of the production. Okay, and yeah. and my and myself of course, but that's a given. I feel like the songs on this album, from the songwriting to the production, they're the, it's stronger strong songwriting in the sense of like more contained pop songs, and uh, from like the dance like you guys got like the the cl dance club type of songs, and then you got like the teach me how to scream, which is like a pop rap song, but like just more aggressive IP kind of sound as we were saying earlier. Yeah, exactly. Uh, kind of. Yeah, so whoever was working on you got on this with you guys with writing these songs, I felt like these songs were a lot stronger than the previous record. Yeah, yeah we we all we all wrote our own our own stuff as far as like lyrics and all that, but um, but do you mean Recording. music or, or like lyrics? Both with the production and the the lyrics and the beats. Yeah. Yeah, th those guys definitely, as in um, Tristan and Kuma guy, like Kuma guy is a legend. So like you could give him a beat and say, I want something like this and he'll do it. Um, I thought he was really dope. And then Tristan, of course, he had been working with us for so long. So he knew what we wanted and he was able to like refine that. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. No, because it wasn't like your typical crunk beats. Like there was crunk elements in it, but like just – it just polished. It just sounded really good. Thank you. Um, Let me see what else I got on here. What was the reception to this album? Because this was a follow-up off uh, your previous album, which was mixed reviews. It hit Billboard. Uh, people were hating on the music video, but like your fans loved – the, the the record as far as uh we'll never die what were the fans and just the overall critics saying about this record fans are fans like they they definitely loved it as far as i as far as i could tell i don't i never really paid attention online though personally okay. do you feel what like about you mike Yeah, like that first album I used to care because you're young, but after that, if you're in the entertainment world, you got to grow a really thick skin, thick skin, very, very, very fast. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel like you, as far as the fans go, do you think they like you guys stepped it up for them? We try to venture into a different kind of sound. That's where we were trying to do like more 808 kind mm -hmm. of like mixture of dubstep kind of in that realm you know yeah but uh we had fun with it and it turned out really cool i'd say the the fans that like what we do they loved it okay right. you know, uh, they they were not disappointed I, 
there's always going to be somebody who's like, man, I liked, I'm not a fan, but the kids like it better, you mm-hmm. know? But at the end of the day, as artists, you grow and you try to change and you try to refine and be better, you know? But we were just doing what we always do, and it's just making music. So it wasn't really different than than anything else, I wouldn't say. It was just, it, it was where it was supposed to be. Okay. Uh, as far as you guys put out a music video called The House Party, which looked like a lot of fun because I watched yes. your behind the scenes. Uh, can you tell me a little like funny stories behind you guys partying during that music video? Yeah, for sure. So um, they they gave us a, a bottle of Grey Goose. It was like part of our um, per diem, writer. Our, our writer, whatever. And um, so we definitely were drinking and having a great time. And like, it, it probably got a little out of control because like we had our own bottle, you know what I mean? And uh, there's a part where you see this dude and he throws a punch and boom, hits the, and then the water goes flying. Well, that's actually me. (laughs) You're the one that got punched in the face? Yeah, because, and he like did it real soft. And I was like, nah, I was like, that was bitch. I was like, hit me for real. And he was a big dude. Like, he was like, was he the guy? No, it was a different guy. He was like, he looked like Will Smith. We were calling him Will Smith the whole time. But like he he hit me and it's just like boom and you just see like the the water like flying off in slow motion it, it's so funny so you got to rewatch that and you'll you'll see that part definitely and like there's <laughs> there's another part where um, I forget who but Sev jumps on somebody's shoulders was it you yeah Mike? right into the mud pit no not me thankfully that would hurt he I jumps on somebody's back. Yeah, yeah they jumped on but... he jumped on somebody's shoulders and then like slipped backwards and falls into this like it was supposed to be a mud pit but it was just gravel and water like it was not a mud pit at all and like he fucked his back up like it was scratched all the way down and i i felt bad but we were all like having a great time and like <laughs> i don't know whose house that was but dude like they lined it luckily they lined everything with plastic but like i remember like showering with all my clothes on and just like dirt and mud and just disgusting shit going down these people's drains and like oh my god it was wild it was wild so you're telling me your label we're like all right you guys are doing a music video it's gonna be a house party we're gonna send you to a house we're gonna give you a bottle of gray goose and you guys are just gonna get fucking wild and lip sync your guys's song or whatever and there's gonna be a mud pit there by the way and you could just fucking go crazy i think we filmed three videos in a weekend so it was just like constant filming because we flew out to Virginia for those ones. Oh damn! Yeah, that's, it that's was a, busy a specific weekend. production, a, a specific production company okay. that we went through for for those three, and then I think he did the next three after that. Um, okay, teach me how to scream, still the king, and phenomenon. Oh, so he he did he did uh, six videos. Uh, he did whoa too. So maybe yeah. a little bit more than that, but, but yeah, we, that we went out to, to Virginia. Those were really fun. There's a behind the scenes to that on, on our um, YouTube, YouTube on our YouTube Side TV. Be sure to check that out. Oh yeah. I was checking out a bunch of those. Uh, I, I did watch the one for teach me how to scream. Uh, yeah. That shit looked like a lot of fun. Wait, where was that studio at? Uh, it was in Virginia Beach somewhere. Uh, Scott Hansen, shout out. He was a really cool director and really talented. But he uh, he had a studio, a production company, I believe. But uh, he did it there. And it was really cool, really good people. And it turned out yeah. really beautiful. He had a crew. And like that's how videos, to me, are after being refined for so long and you know finding what is more professional, if Freaks was that, I think it probably would have went a little bit better as far as like uh, quality. Yeah, the visual, <laughs> but, the image to it. So we, I mean, luckily we transitioned pretty quick. 
Yeah, no, because it's crazy because, like, you guys put out the Freaks music video and, like, people clown on you for that. But, like, the other music videos, like, 40 ounce, like, come on. Like, Dude, just even having E40 in a video, that's, like, not just anything that can just happen. That dude's a legend, as we said before. So, you know, we're very fortunate and I'm very thankful. Right. Yeah, no, that definitely, in my eyes, that brings more credibility to Broken Side to, as, as, like, makes you guys more and legitimate at the end of the uh, day yeah, man. and just you know paul wall as well you know that's southern you know like shit you that know that was we, a we good collab trying to do Thank something you. you know yeah we got cosigns by a lot of like legit artists we got some good cosigns paul wall e40 um daddy x from cottonmouth kings like you know what i mean we got a lot of of, of um really good cosigns that think, I'm proud of. I think personally, like, as far as, like, w where the direction of Broken Side, I feel like there should have been more collabs like those instead of putting you guys on tours with, like, bands like Census Fail. Like, maybe, like, mm -hmm. that warp Tour it's scene. What, what's selling for tours because we were just hard to place. Yeah. We just carved our own niche because you can't put us in the rap world and you can't put us in the rock world, so... We just had to sacrifice and take the bullshit and go to the rock world, the screamo, as you would call it nowadays. But, you know, like I said, we work, dude. We worked really hard. We were we were touring for sometimes seven, eight months out of the year. You know, like we worked really hard. Yeah, so those years from like 2007 to 2010, like you guys were nonstop. <laughs> And our, our manager, shout out to Jared Baker. He um he was really good at knowing where we belonged and you know what I mean? He set up a lot of that stuff. Like he he was really dope in that in that aspect. I yeah, I agree. And you guys gotta work with like what makes sense and stuff like that. So I don't think it it's uh it doesn't make sense that you're thrown on shows with like Jeffree Star, like the millionaires and stuff like that. But like, I feel like you guys would have really thrived if like you bridged that rock rap gap, if you were thrown more into like other, like being featured on rappers, music videos kind of stuff. That, like nowadays, that's what, what I always try to say, you know what I mean? Now that right now it's like, it's mainstream to fucking do exactly what we're doing, but we were fighting fucking blood, sweat, and tears for what people are having nowadays. And like I say, that's what I'm saying of paving the road. Yeah, and that was what was popular, like the MySpace bands and stuff like that. And you, that was your guys' whole aesthetic and shit. Like that's that's where you talk to your fans and shit like that. Like, yeah, we we weren't about the fame. We were about the music and the art. So that mm -hmm. was cool. But that's where the the transition of broken side will never die from i'm not a kids and you know it just kept growing and growing and just trying to grow in sound because as art you just want to keep painting that next beautiful line instead of just you know a color right um so also in 2010 on your guys's uh cycle of we'll never die you guys toured with jeffrey star um I saw that you guys posted a picture on your Instagram the other day saying like, yo, throw it back to the tour with Jeffree Star. Uh, do you guys have any good memories uh, chilling with Jeffree? Yeah, he was just all to Broken Side. Like we always just chilled, I guess, kind of, you know, we ventured, but like we chilled. But like Jeffree was always just cool. He wasn't really Jeffree. He was just normal Jeffree as we know him. Mm -hmm. but yeah, this is before like, the makeup the youtube and all that shit even when he was makeup just around us he was like really fucking cool he was just really down to earth like we didn't there was times of jeffrey because jeffrey's jeffrey but you know what i mean that's the entertainment world but jeffrey was always cool with us did people yeah. give jeffrey star a lot of shit back in the day for like the music he was making and for his image it's just like i guess like what we were doing we believed whether people accepted it or not he was just trying to do what he believed in and be himself and who cares what anybody believes and now look at him and mm -hmm. that's where we were too like who cares what people say because that's you know the white picket fence and a house by 25 and a fam yeah right you mm -hmm. know what i mean like we're those other people that branch off and just do our thing and like that's the jeffrey we knew 
and yeah he was he was fun like there there was this one time that uh we so we had our van and like we had done maybe like four or five tours without washing it there's like barf all on the side there's bugs there's just disgusting shit all over the side of our van and like we pull up to the venue and we see jeffrey and he walks up and he tries to freak us out and by like licking our window in a very sexual way and we were all grossed out but not because of like the gayness but because like because like because dude, of how don't just do that fucking, just how disgusting our tour van was and we're like oh no no but that was my favorite memory oh i just thought God. that shit was so funny man it's like no offense jeffrey there's nothing sexy about licking broken sides window he's just cute like jeffrey jeffrey's cool you know what i mean to us like he i guess that's what i'm trying to say he was just real like a boy because that's what we would do yeah. we'd go to our boy and fucking lick his window like ah! yeah and that's the jeffrey we knew he wasn't pranking you know, each other right. like just doing all the different shit yeah, you know just normal cool natural shit so shout out to jeffrey you guys still keep in touch at all yeah he's really cool you know we're not besties but you know shout out and you know he says what's up here and there so he's Dope. like on another level as we all know so he's, he's business it. right now. <laughs> yeah so but it, it was cool just to have him in the scene of where if you believe something go for it Right. And it usually worked out. And that's what I think should always happen, I guess. He definitely pushed a lot of boundaries, too. I respected that about him. Yeah. You yep. know, and he's obviously like a genius in marketing, but that's that's a whole nother story. Sure. But he was definitely a cool dude to us. Uh, okay. 2011, we got guilty pleasures. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the guilty pleasures era? Where, where does this name come from? What was the guilty pleasure? Us. You guys are the guilty <laughs> pleasure. It's just like, yeah, you know. it's hard to keep our names out of like, because it's sad nowadays because people will blast our name because it brings views. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what like, we're a guilty pleasure because you're going to talk shit about us because it's fucking cool and it feels cool yeah. but yet we're still your guilty pleasure because you're jamming our music right uh is there like a particular demographic that's like the broken side like fandom because like uh, now that you guys are like over 10 years old like is is I it guess. still the old the younger kids that like grew up or like are you making new fans from like this new generation like what who reaches out as like a broken side fan nowadays luckily i think we're still fortunate enough to still have the nostalgic aspect but we still have those people that still want to venture out so we have those people that are enjoying the music still and okay. not just you know sticking to the soundcloud mainstream sound you know yeah um so where did you guys go to record guilty pleasures i think my kuma guy still right yeah 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 i want to say he he did that one as well okay and... so it was at his house again okay so and i remember he had a, a iguana in the iguana cage <laughs> and like you could hear the water running <laughs> we're like uh is this gonna affect the recording nah man you're good but like there's just like water like a little iguana waterfall and shit <laughs> uh so yeah so this is the album that paul wall gets featured on right right uh did you guys get to hang out with paul wall no, but uh, we crossed a show with him in, I believe, Texas, and and we got to meet him. Oh, so that's sick! It was really cool. Yeah, it Shout was it, it was really sick because it was like the um, it was like the Houston the Houston music scene show. So like everybody was there. You know what I mean? Chameleon Air, Bun B, Slim Thug, all those guys were all there, and like we we're just chilling smoking blunts like it was, it was definitely sick 
Nice. Well, do you know what's like just cool from like my perspective with like how the music industry works is uh, it's just interesting to see that like how it works in the sense of like getting a feature onto your track because like if you guys don't have communication with that artist beforehand and like they send you just any old like verse that they recorded like are you stuck with that verse or can you say like nah fuck this scrap it you're you're just generally excited that this person wanted to do it at all so yeah. um for me personally i was just super geeked that like i was working with these fucking legends you know what i mean people that i've always listened to and respected and like the fact it's that the game we're just like kids from albuquerque you know like to do songs with paul wall like that's crazy yeah that's crazy if you would have told me that when i was a kid i'd have been like yeah right dude you know what i mean but like what if like the artist you're working with like you're super excited and like you get the track back it just sounds like they just grabbed the check from your label and they just didn't give a fuck and they're just like here just fucking take this like i don't give a fuck we'll never know but thanks i i take it Cause like, yeah. I know there's like the featured X. I don't know if you heard of that. Like the featured X app now where artists can now, uh, take commissions for a feature. If you want a specific artist on your track and, uh, I think you... that separates art from entertainment. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, I'm going to loosely say kind of, but yeah. Cause I feel like it's a little dangerous. Cause like you, as soon as the artist gets the money, they could just like send you back some bullshit. Yeah, that's why I don't know. Artists we never artists dealt with that. that. We never yeah. dealt with that. They always sent us fire every time. Like I was never personally disappointed. Like ah, oh, they could have done better. It was just like oh shit, that's sick. You so know? Just dealing with artists, like art between artists. That's the way I feel. Yeah, I guess, like, also their name's at stake, so if they put out something whack, like, you know, if their name's featured on it, they're going to look like a fucking asshole. Yeah, we were in a yeah. whole other round before social media even existed, so people don't think about that. Yeah, that's true. But like, you know what's funny? We never were featured. We were never featured on anything. That's I what think I was that's saying. I, that's kind of strange, huh? I feel like you guys would have done so awesome blending the rock in the rap world if you guys featured like on like a fucking like Lil John song or like a Ludacris song or some shit. Preach. Yeah. That would have been that would have been cool, but I don't know. I just think it's it's a little strange. You know, we we never did one. Is that the label's fault, or do you think that like? Uh, it was from the lack of playing more shows with rappers. Yeah, I think it's hard to get in that world, kind of. Yeah. Uh, music maybe is very both. political. People mm. don't like music and entertainment. They they cross, but it gets very sticky. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot. I, just from experience, there's tons of politics involved in the music industry. And people just... don't realize that. Like we were just making music to make people have fun. And then when you enter that world, you kind of learn that and it makes you a smarter, uh, not smarter, but it, it shows you a lot of stuff you didn't know in the music world. Right. Like we, we had these major artists on our album, but like they never pushed it really. You know what I mean? Like they didn't share it or, you know what I mean? They didn't like make it super known. It was just cool for us as individuals, you know what I mean? And for our own, our own reputation you know what i mean right because it wasn't it wasn't like e40 was like yo check out this song i'm on even though he did the promo videos and like that was super dope of him to do but i'm just saying like it, it isn't it isn't always expected or known that when you get a track with somebody that they're not obligated to like help you push it or or like share it in any way you know what i mean so it's yeah. all it's all one way in a, in a way that's like, no disrespect to anybody that like worked with us i'm just saying like it's just mm. it, it it was one way honestly dude yeah, that's sure. like the same thing like with this podcast like i do interviews with you know people that got 
their name in the fucking scene and shit like that and i appreciate any artist but it means the world to me when they repost it on their shit so their fans come over to me it's a little cross promotion kind of thing so i totally get that (laughs) yeah well i'll personally be sharing it just so you know yeah i appreciate that because you know why not dude it's free content like it just doesn't make sense to me unless you're like ashamed of yourself or something i get that sometimes because you know you're talking a lot about like other people and stuff like that i don't know like i think some i don't know even me when i've been on other podcasts i get a little weird about sharing it because i'm just like oh well i are people gonna think this is lame i don't know i don't know just that quicksand mentality you just gotta stay the positive vibe and be yourself man Dude, I need to hear that, man. Yeah. Whatever it is will be. Yep. Uh all right. So uh where where else? We're we're still in guilty pleasures era. Um my phone might die any moment. <laughs> just oh, so no. you know. <laughs> all right. Uh, and I can't plug it in because I'm using headphones. Fat J, let's get this real quick. Why did you leave Broken Side? Um, so I'm a tattoo artist. And um, so I was trying to concentrate a little bit more on my art. You know what I mean? And uh, and also, like, my underground hip-hop, I wanted to explore that a little bit more and just find myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously, like, I love these guys with all my heart forever and always. I hate always. you. Don't talk to me. And, like, fuck Michael, but, like, everybody else has been so cool to me and... No, but like, you know, sometimes you, you want to find yourself and, and see where you lie and see what I, I just wanted to know who I was as a musician. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. But also I, I had I had a lot of time being dedicated to art and tattooing. And it's really hard to like be five different people because I'm a dad, I'm a husband. I'm a tattoo artist. I'm a painter. I'm a videographer. I'm a producer. I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to stay focused on one thing at a time, basically, or like a couple things at a time. But like, obviously we're still making music. We're still, you know what I mean? I I have my broken side shirt. Like I have, I'm wearing it. Like I'm proud of everything that that Mike and I and and Sev and Ants that we've all created, you know what I mean? And that'll literally be the biggest part of my life other than um, marriage and children, you know, like, like unforgettable things that that like, other people won't ever understand, like even my wife, like, I can't talk to her about certain things that I can talk to Michael about because Michael and I were there. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so like it's just so special and like dope and and i'm so proud of everything we've done new ep out you guys just put out a music video with melissa from uh the millionaires personally my favorite song off this record is i think it's called call of the wild is that correct yeah 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 that one's got some serious like early 2009 electronic vibes and i'm super about it yeah Uh, shout out to um god the bounty hunter Um, he's doing the the hook on there yeah he's dope is he a new artist yeah he's a new artist he's he's like um he's definitely from that old 2009 fabric so it, it made a lot of sense to involve him on there oh that's sick um but yeah, to go back to the 2009 song, I wanted to know, because, you know, you guys are shouting out uh, one of the biggest years of your guys' career. Uh, what was the overall vibe of 2009 or any specific memories that you hold very dearly specifically to that year? Just changing the world and being on Warp Tour, dude, coming from New Mexico. As I always say, like, if you're from New Mexico, you don't get it. Mm-hmm. Like, so super uh blessed and i appreciate like what we've done and being able to do with the belief of all of our fans because it's wild beyond belief for me for 2009 yeah. right 
2009 was a, a huge year for me personally because um like music wise we had the warp tour all that stuff but i also got married and i had my first son in 2009 so obviously it was like a huge crazy year for me oh my but god but like the be- in the best way in the best way yeah tour records uh kiddos kids drama like partying like you guys like that was a huge year for you yeah yeah super grateful and thankfully we've had our fans and you know they keep our name alive and you know you never know maybe there's some magic here to come who knows yeah so what's when fat jay when we rejoin in back in the broken side and when we get in the ants back when are we getting the full lineup back for broken side like are we going to get another tour eventually when shows are back i I think the fans need to demand that so it fucking happens okay yeah just like it's up to the the fans made us Mm -hmm. and you know that they're a part of us so I know shows are going to be one wild thing and I know we're all ready to, I can't say all of us, but personally, I know I'm ready to kill a stage and have a great time. Timing is everything. Timing and like everything stars aligning. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's far beyond just music. It's real life. You know, we got kids, we got wives, we got, you know, Baltimore, we got, (laughs) we got all sorts of things happening all the time. You know what I mean? So like, we literally have to all coincide and like make it happen. But I, I don't see why it won't happen, but you never know. I watched the video of Michael, you and Sev playing like this intimate, like LA party. And it was funny. That was wild and super wild. That party looked fucking lit. <laughs> and if it was, I posted this on my Facebook. I reshared that video, and I was just like, "When shows are back, this is the sh- type of show I want to go to." Yeah, dude. It was two o'clock in the morning when we got on stage. By that time, and shout out again to little Aaron because he, he he was, was there. Moshing. He played that show, and man, that was wild. I've never really been in a mosh pit, but I got fucked up that show, and the people loved it, and they were like. Everybody else performed on stage, but luckily we got to, you know, be a little bit different again and got to play with the people in the crowd. And that was fucking wild. I think there would be a great pocket for Broken Side in 2021 if you guys aligned yourself with the right scene, like with the SoundCloud artists and stuff. Because I feel like now like it's cool to like groups that sound like Broken Side. I feel like the people that used to listen to you now you guys can get together and uh form a a new scene that's you know better than the warp tour scene that where no one was showing broken side respect building block if we just wash our hands wear our mask and we'll be back to that here pretty soon yeah absolutely but uh any final words to the fans guys dude thank you for your time it's been a long journey and uh Broken Side will never die. And be sure to check out Mirage that Fat Jay and I did and Broken Side TV. And be sure to follow this podcast because it's been a great time. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Dude, thank you guys. And thank you everyone that stuck out this video and this interview with uh, Michael and Fat Jay. Um, and the chinchilla. And the no. chinchilla. <laughs> <laughs> um we're to all the crowd rooms don't forget to like comment share and subscribe hit that notification bell you get the alert as soon as the episode's posted and thank you everyone for watching